Demons are supernatural beings that are often depicted as malevolent, powerful entities with the ability to possess or influence humans. They have been a prominent part of many cultures and religions throughout history, often associated with evil, chaos and the devil. The concept of demons can be traced back to ancient Mesopotamia, where they were believed to be powerful spirits that could cause sickness and misfortune. In Judeo-Christian tradition, demons are often described as fallen angels who rebelled against God and were cast out of heaven. Throughout history, demons have been feared for their ability to possess humans, causing them to behave in strange or destructive ways. In many cultures, people believed that demons could be invoked through rituals or spells and that they could bring harm to individuals or entire communities. In contemporary popular culture, demons continue to be depicted as frightening and malevolent beings, often associated with the occult and supernatural. The fear of demons is rooted in the belief that they have the power to harm or destroy those who are vulnerable and that they are difficult to control or defeat. Join us as we explore the Infernal Legions, uncovering the 15 of the most feared demons from the depths of hell. Number 15. Satan Satan, also known as the devil, is a central figure in Abrahamic religions, particularly in Christianity, Judaism and Islam. He is often portrayed as the embodiment of evil, a fallen angel who rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. In the Bible, Satan is first mentioned in the book of Genesis as a serpent who tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden, thus leading to the fall of humanity. He is later described as the accuser, adversary and deceiver who tempts people to sin and opposes God's will. In the New Testament, Satan is depicted as a powerful and malevolent force who seeks to thwart God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ. He is described as the prince of this world, the ruler of demons, and the father of lies. Jesus himself is said to have confronted Satan in the wilderness, resisting his temptations and rebuking his influence. The depiction of Satan has evolved over time, and different cultures and religions have their own interpretations of this figure. In popular culture, Satan is often portrayed as a horned and tailed creature, wielding a pitchfork and presiding over a fiery underworld. Despite his fearsome reputation, many believers view Satan as a defeated foe, who has been ultimately overcome by God's power and grace. Some also see Satan as a necessary evil, who serves as a test of faith and a means of strengthening one's spiritual resolve. Number 14. Beelzebub Beelzebub is a well-known figure in Christian and Jewish demonology. His name means Lord of the Flies and he is often depicted as a grotesque creature with insect wings and a humanoid body. He is associated with temptation, corruption and decay and is considered to be one of the most powerful demons in the hierarchy of hell. Beelzebub is mentioned several times in the Bible, particularly in the New Testament. In the Gospel of Matthew, he is referred to as the Prince of Demons and in the Book of Revelation, he is described as the one who deceives the whole world. According to Christian tradition, Beelzebub was originally a Canaanite deity worshipped by the Philistines and his name was later adopted by the Jews as a synonym for Satan. In popular culture, Beelzebub is often portrayed as a cunning and malevolent entity, using his powers to corrupt and deceive mortals. He is said to be able to assume various forms, including that of a fly, and is known for his ability to manipulate the minds of those he wishes to ensnare. In some depictions, he is shown as having a particular fondness for corrupting religious figures, tempting them with power, wealth and forbidden knowledge. Despite his reputation as a malevolent force, Beelzebub is also sometimes seen as a symbol of rebellion against authority and conformity. Some people believe that he represents the freedom to choose one's own path, even if that path leads to destruction. In this way, Beelzebub can be seen as a complex figure, embodying both temptation and the desire for personal autonomy. Overall, Beelzebub remains an enduring figure in popular culture and religious mythology. Number 13. Asmodeus Asmodeus is a powerful demon that is often associated with lust and desire. According to ancient texts and folklore, Asmodeus has the ability to influence and manipulate human beings to commit acts of sexual misconduct and immorality. This demonic entity is often depicted as a handsome and seductive figure, luring people into his web of temptation and sin. In various traditions, Asmodeus is considered one of the seven princes of hell, ruling over the sin of lust and corruption. He is said to have immense power and control over human sexuality, able to influence and manipulate people's desires and passions. Asmodeus is often depicted as a shapeshifter, able to take on different forms to lure his victims into sin. In some texts, Asmodeus is said to have been responsible for the fall of King Solomon, who was led astray by his lust for women. Asmodeus is said to have been the one who seduced Solomon's wives and concubines, leading the king down a path of moral corruption and destruction. 
In modern times, Asmodeus has become a popular figure in popular culture, appearing in movies, books, and television shows. His seductive and dangerous persona has captivated audiences around the world, and he continues to be a source of fascination and fear. Despite his alluring and seductive nature, Asmodeus is considered to be one of the most dangerous and destructive demons in the underworld. His power to corrupt and manipulate human beings is a threat to the moral and spiritual fabric of society, and many religious leaders warn of the dangers of succumbing to his influence. In the end, the story of Asmodeus serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked desire and lust. Number 12. Leviathan Leviathan is a fascinating creature that has captured the imagination of people for centuries. In the Bible, Leviathan is mentioned in the book of Job as a sea monster that is often associated with chaos and destruction. This creature has been the subject of numerous interpretations and debates throughout history. Many have tried to understand the meaning and symbolism of Leviathan and its significance in religious and philosophical thought. The word Leviathan is derived from the Hebrew word Leviathan, which means twisted or coiled. In the book of Job, Leviathan is described as a fearsome sea monster with multiple heads and great strength. It is said to be untamable and impossible to control. Its movements are described as chaotic and unpredictable, and it is often associated with storms and tempests. Leviathan is seen as a symbol of chaos and destruction, and is often used in religious and philosophical discourse to represent the forces of evil and darkness. In the Bible, Leviathan is described as one of the creatures that God has created to test the faith of humanity. Its appearance is meant to instill fear and awe in people, and to remind them of the power and might of God. In philosophical thought, Leviathan is often used as a metaphor for the state or government. In his book, Leviathan, the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes used the creature as a symbol for the power and authority of the state. He argued that the state was necessary to control the chaos and disorder that would result if people were left to their own devices. Other thinkers have interpreted Leviathan in different ways. For example, the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche saw the creature as a symbol of creativity and vitality. He argued that the chaotic and destructive forces represented by Leviathan were necessary for the renewal and growth of society. Leviathan has also been a popular subject in art and literature. The creature has been depicted in paintings, sculptures and illustrations and has been the inspiration for countless works of fiction. In modern popular culture, Leviathan is often portrayed as a massive sea serpent or dragon and is associated with science fiction and fantasy genres. In conclusion, Leviathan is a complex and multifaceted creature that has played an important role in religious, philosophical and cultural thought. Whether it is seen as a symbol of chaos and destruction or as a metaphor for the power of the state, Leviathan continues to fascinate and intrigue people to this day. Number 11. Maimon Mammon is a demon in Christian theology and mythology, which represents the power and allure of wealth and material possessions. It is often associated with the sin of greed and the love of money. The term mammon is derived from the Hebrew word mammon, which means wealth or money. In the Bible, Jesus warned against the worship of mammon, saying, You cannot serve God in mammon. Mammon is often portrayed as a dark and insidious force that tempts people to prioritize wealth over spiritual values. It is said to manifest in different ways, such as greed, avarice, materialism, and covetousness. Raman's influence can be seen in our culture, where people often equate success and happiness with the acquisition of material possessions. The temptation of mammon can be subtle or overt, but it is always seductive. It can lead people to compromise their values, to act unethically, or to place their own desires above the needs of others. The love of money can become so powerful that it can consume a person's life, leaving little room for anything else. It can lead to a cycle of endless desire and discontent, as people constantly strive for more and more wealth. Mammon has a long history in religious and cultural traditions. In ancient Babylon, the god Mammon was worshipped as the deity of riches and abundance. In modern times, Mammon has been depicted in literature, film and music as a symbol of the corrupting influence of wealth and power. To overcome the temptation of Mammon, it is essential to cultivate spiritual values such as compassion, generosity and gratitude. It requires a shift in priorities from the pursuit of material wealth to the pursuit of inner peace and contentment. It is only when we let go of our attachment to material possessions that we can experience true happiness and fulfillment. In conclusion, Mammon is a powerful force that can lead people to prioritize material wealth over spiritual values. It is a seductive and insidious influence that can consume a person's life. To overcome the temptation of Mammon, we must cultivate spiritual values and prioritize our inner well-being over the pursuit of material possessions. Number 10. A Burden Abaddon is a figure of great significance in Judeo-Christian mythology. In the Hebrew Bible, Abaddon is a term used to describe the realm of the dead or the underworld. 
It is also mentioned in the book of Revelation as the angel of the abyss who will lead the forces of evil in the final battle of Armageddon. As the angel of destruction, Abaddon is often associated with the end of the world and the coming of the apocalypse. The name Abaddon is derived from the Hebrew word Abaddon, which means destruction or ruin. In the New Testament, the Greek word Apollyon is used to refer to Abaddon, which means destroyer. The book of Revelation describes Abaddon as a powerful and fearsome angel who leads a horde of locusts that will torment and punish sinners during the end times. In Jewish tradition, Abaddon is one of the four angels of destruction, along with Samuel, Azazel and Metatron. Abaddon is also associated with the Hebrew demon Asmodeus, who is often depicted as a destructive force that brings chaos and suffering to the world. In some accounts, Abaddon is even considered to be a fallen angel who rebelled against God and was cast down to the underworld. Abaddon's role in the apocalypse is a subject of much debate and speculation. Some interpret Abaddon as a literal being who will lead the forces of evil in the final battle of Armageddon, while others see Abaddon as a metaphorical representation of the destructive power of sin and evil. Regardless of one's interpretation, the figure of Abaddon serves as a powerful reminder of the consequences of sin and the importance of repentance and redemption. In popular culture, Abaddon has been featured in numerous works of literature and film. In Neil Gaiman's Sun Moon series, Abaddon is depicted as a powerful demon who serves as a henchman of Lucifer. In the video game Diablo, Abaddon is portrayed as the lord of sin who seeks to bring about the end of the world. Abaddon has also been featured in numerous heavy metal songs, with bands like Slayer, Morbid Angel and Arch Enemy all referencing the Angel of Destruction in their lyrics. In conclusion, Abaddon is a complex and intriguing figure in Judeo-Christian mythology. As the Angel of Destruction, Abaddon represents the destructive power of sin and the consequences of turning away from God. Number 9. Hazazel Azazel is one of the most infamous and feared demons in ancient mythology. He is often depicted as a powerful, cunning and seductive demon who can easily manipulate people to do his bidding. According to some sources, Azazel is also known as the goat demon due to his association with goats and sacrificial rituals. He is believed to have taught humans how to make weapons and jewellery, which was seen as a way of promoting rebellion and disobedience against the divine order. In ancient Jewish folklore, Azazel is mentioned in the book of Leviticus as a demon who was exiled to the desert along with another demon named Barabbas. The text describes how the Israelites would perform a ritual on the Day of Atonement where they would cast lots over two goats, one of which would be sacrificed to God, while the other would be sent to Azazel as a scapegoat. This practice of scapegoating is believed to be a way of purging the community of their sins and transferring them onto the goat, who is then sent to Azazel to carry the sins into the wilderness. Some interpretations of the myth suggest that Azazel was not merely a demonic entity, but a symbol of the human desire for power and knowledge. He represents the temptation to break free from the constraints of religion and authority, and to seek enlightenment and self-realization through unconventional means. The fact that he taught humans how to make weapons and jewelry is seen as a metaphor for the acquisition of knowledge and skills that can be used for both good and evil. As a demon of rebellion and disobedience, Azazel has been associated with various historical movements and social revolutions. He has been invoked by anarchist and leftist groups as a symbol of resistance against oppressive regimes and hierarchical structures. Some modern pagans and occultists also see him as a patron of individual freedom and creativity and as a teacher of magical and alchemical arts. However, Azizul is not merely a benign or benevolent figure. His association with sacrificial rituals and bloodshed, as well as his reputation as a deceiver and seducer, make him a feared and dangerous entity. In some traditions, he is believed to be a fallen angel who rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven, along with other fallen angels such as Lucifer and Asmodeus. As such, he is seen as a demonic adversary who seeks to lead humans astray and to bring chaos and destruction to the world. In conclusion, Azizel is a complex and multifaceted demon who embodies both the desire for knowledge and power, as well as the dangers of rebellion and disobedience. He has been invoked and feared by various cultures throughout history, and continues to inspire fascination and terror in modern times. Number 8. Belfigur Belfigur is a demon of sloth in demonology, often depicted as a grotesque, horned creature with a jester's cap or a headdress. He is said to be the lord of the Moabites, and his name is believed to come from Balpior, a Moabite deity. According to legend, Belfigur is responsible for tempting people to be lazy and avoid work, encouraging them to indulge in pleasures that ultimately lead to their destruction. In many cultures, sloth has long been considered one of the seven deadly sins, alongside pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony and wrath. Sloth is often associated with idleness, apathy and a lack of motivation, and is viewed as a spiritual and moral failing. Belfigur is believed to embody these negative traits and to use them to lead people astray. 
Belfigur is often portrayed as a seductive and charismatic figure, capable of luring people into a life of sloth and excess. He is said to offer them easy solutions to their problems, promising them wealth, pleasure, and power without requiring any effort or hard work. However, those who fall under his spell soon discover that his promises are empty and that his gifts come at a great cost. The demon's influence is often associated with economic downturns, as people become increasingly disillusioned with work and productivity. Belfigur is said to thrive in times of recession and unemployment, taking advantage of people's despair and offering them an escape from their troubles. In some cultures, he is also associated with laziness and academia, encouraging students to procrastinate and avoid studying. Despite his sinister reputation, Belfigur is also a popular figure in popular culture, particularly in horror films and video games. His image has been used in everything from heavy metal album covers to anime series, and he has become an iconic symbol of demonic evil. Overall, Belfigur represents the dangers of sloth and the importance of hard work and discipline. His legend serves as a cautionary tale, reminding us of the perils of taking the easy path and the need to stay focused and motivated in our daily lives. Number 7. Legion Legion is a term used in the New Testament to refer to a group of demons that possessed a man. The story of Legion is found in the Gospel of Mark, and it describes a man who was possessed by many demons. The demons identified themselves as Legion, which is a Latin term that refers to a large military unit consisting of several thousand soldiers. The use of the term Legion to describe the demons is significant because it highlights the magnitude of the possession and the power that the demons had over the man. The story of Legion is one of the most famous stories in the New Testament, and it has become a symbol of chaos and disorder. The man possessed by Legion was described as being tormented by the demons, and he lived among the tombs, where he would cry out and cut himself with stones. The possession by the demons caused the man to lose control of his thoughts and actions, and he became a danger to himself and others. The story of Legion highlights the power of evil and the need for divine intervention to overcome it. The association of Legion with chaos and disorder is not limited to the story in the New Testament. The term Legion has been used in popular culture to refer to groups or individuals who represent chaos and disorder. For example, the term has been used to describe large groups of protesters who engage in violent or destructive behaviour. The use of the term Legion in this context highlights the idea that large groups of people can become a force of chaos and disorder if they are not controlled. In Christian theology, demons are often associated with evil and chaos. The possession by Legion in the New Testament is seen as a manifestation of the power of evil, and the healing of the man is seen as a victory over evil. The story of Legion is often used to highlight the importance of faith and the power of divine intervention in overcoming evil. In conclusion, Legion is a group of demons that possessed a man in the New Testament, and it is often associated with chaos and disorder. The story of Legion highlights the power of evil and the need for divine intervention to overcome it. The use of the term Legion in popular culture to describe groups or individuals who represent chaos and disorder is a testament to the enduring influence of the story in the New Testament. Number 6. Dol. The name Baal is derived from the Semitic word Baal, meaning Lord or Master, and it refers to a group of deities worshipped in the ancient Near East. The worship of Baal was prevalent in various ancient cultures, including the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, and the Babylonians. Baal was often depicted as a fertility god, responsible for the prosperity of crops and the fecundity of animals. The worship of Baal was associated with various rituals, including the sacrifice of animals and humans, fertility rites, and other religious ceremonies. The followers of Baal believed that by appeasing the god, they would ensure the continuation of their prosperity and well-being. However, in the Bible, Baal is portrayed as a false idol and a source of evil. The worship of Baal is condemned throughout the Old Testament, and the prophets frequently rebuke the Israelites for their association with the deity. The book of Judges recounts how the Israelites turned to the worship of Baal and other gods, leading to their downfall and subjugation by their enemies. In the book of Kings, the prophet Elijah confronts the worshippers of Baal on Mount Carmel and challenges them to a contest to see whose god is the true god. The contest involves building altars and calling upon the respective deities to bring down fire upon the offerings. When Baal fails to answer the prayers of his followers, Elijah calls upon the God of Israel, who sends down fire to consume the offering. The condemnation of Baal worship in the Bible reflects the religious and cultural conflicts that existed in the ancient Near East. The worship of Baal was seen as a challenge to the authority of the God of Israel and a rejection of the values and traditions of the Israelite people. 
Despite the negative portrayal of Baal in the Bible, the deity continues to be a subject of fascination and study among scholars and historians. The worship of Baal has been the subject of numerous archaeological excavations, and many of the artifacts and inscriptions recovered shed light on the religious practices and beliefs of ancient cultures. In conclusion, Baal is a demon of fertility and a god of harvest and prosperity, worshipped by many ancient cultures. However, in the Bible, Baal is portrayed as a false idol and a source of evil. Number 5. Harmony Amun is a demon of wealth that has been mentioned in several texts related to demonology. In ancient mythology, he was considered to be one of the 72 demons that were under the control of King Solomon. He was also included in the grimoire, the Lesser Key of Solomon, which is a manual for invoking demons. Amun is said to have the power to reveal hidden treasures and wealth to those who summon him. This is one of the primary reasons why people have been trying to summon him for centuries. According to some sources, Amun is known for leading his followers to treasures that are buried deep within the earth or hidden in other places. In fact, he is said to be so powerful that he can even help people find lost objects. However, summoning Amun is not without risks. He is also known to demand sacrifices, and those who do not offer him what he wants are at risk of facing his wrath. He is considered to be a dangerous entity to work with, and only experienced practitioners should attempt to summon him. According to some sources, Amun is associated with the element of fire. This could explain why he is seen as a powerful force that demands respect and sacrifices. In some texts, he is also said to have the ability to change the shape of things and to manipulate fire. This is a power that is often associated with demons, and it is considered to be one of the things that make them so dangerous. There are several rituals that people use to summon Amun. However, most of them involve using a circle of protection and other forms of magic to keep the demon under control. The summoner must also be very clear about what they want from Amun and must be prepared to make sacrifices if necessary. In conclusion, Amun is a demon of wealth that has been mentioned in several texts related to demonology. He is known for his ability to reveal hidden treasures and wealth to those who summon him. However, he is also a dangerous entity to work with, and those who do not offer him what he wants are at risk of facing his wrath. Number 4. Lilith The story of Lilith is one that has fascinated people for centuries and has been the subject of many different interpretations and myths. Although not explicitly named in the Bible, her story has been passed down through oral tradition and various texts and has been adapted and reimagined in countless ways. Lilith is often portrayed as a powerful, independent figure who refuses to be subservient to Adam or any other man. According to some versions of the myth, she was created at the same time as Adam and was therefore his equal. However, when Adam demanded that Lilith submit to him and be his subordinate, she refused and left the Garden of Eden to live on her own. In some versions of the myth, Lilith is depicted as a demon or succubus who preys on men and seduces them with her sensuality and sexuality. She is often associated with lust, temptation and the darker aspects of human desire. However, in other interpretations, she is seen as a feminist icon who embodies the struggle for women's rights and autonomy. Throughout history, Lilith has been a controversial figure and has been both revered and demonized. In Jewish tradition, she is seen as a symbol of feminine power and rebellion and is sometimes invoked in rituals and prayers. However, in Christian and Islamic traditions, she is often depicted as a demonic figure who represents temptation and evil. Despite the conflicting interpretations of Lilith, her story continues to inspire artists, writers, and thinkers around the world. Number 3. Dagon Dagon is an ancient Mesopotamian deity who was later adopted by the Philistines as their patron god. The origin of Dagon's name is uncertain, but it is believed to be derived from the Hebrew word Dagon, which means grain. In the Canaanite religion, Dagon was associated with fertility, harvest and abundance. However, the Philistines had a different interpretation of the god. In the Old Testament, Dagon is mentioned several times as the god of the Philistines, who are depicted as the archenemies of the Israelites. The first reference to Dagon is in the Book of Judges, where the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant and take it to their temple of Dagon in the city of Ashdod. The next day, the statue of Dagon falls face down before the Ark, and the Philistines interpret it as a sign of the power of the Israelite god. However, they put the statue back in its place, and the following day, it falls again, this time breaking into pieces. This story is an example of the Old Testament's condemnation of the worship of false gods. Dagon is portrayed as powerless before the Israelite god, who is the only true deity. Furthermore, the fact that Dagon is associated with the power of the ocean and fish highlights the limited nature of his domain. 
Unlike the God of Israel, who has power over all creation, Dagon's influence is limited to the sea and the creatures that inhabit it. Dagon is also mentioned in the book of Samuel, where the Philistines once again face defeat at the hands of the Israelites. The Philistines take the Ark of the Covenant to the Temple of Dagon in the city of Ashdod. But this time, the statue of Dagon is destroyed and the people of the city suffer from a plague of tumours. This story reinforces the message of the Old Testament that the worship of false gods leads to destruction and suffering. In summary, Dagon was a god worshipped by the Philistines, who are portrayed as enemies of the Israelites in the Old Testament. Dagon is associated with the power of the ocean and fish and is depicted as a false god. Number 2. Moloch Moloch was one of the many ancient deities worshipped by the Ammonites, a people who lived in what is now known as modern-day Jordan. According to various historical accounts, Moloch was a god who demanded child sacrifice from his followers in exchange for blessings and protection. Moloch was depicted as a bronze statue with the head of a bull and outstretched arms. The statue was heated with fire and parents would place their infants and children in its arms, where they would be burned alive as a sacrifice to the god. The screams and cries of the children were said to be drowned out by the sound of drums and music played during the ritual. The worship of Moloch was seen as an act of idolatry, which was strictly prohibited by the Hebrew god, Yahweh, as it went against the first commandment. The prophet Jeremiah warned the Israelites against worshipping false gods and rebuked them for engaging in the practice of child sacrifice. In the book of Leviticus, Yahweh commanded the Israelites to abstain from giving any of their offspring to Moloch and promised severe punishment for anyone who disobeyed. The concept of Moloch as a destructive and bloodthirsty god has been used in literature and art for centuries. The poet Allen Ginsberg wrote a famous poem titled Howl, in which he references Moloch as a symbol of modern society's industrial and consumerist culture that sacrifices its youth to greed and materialism. Similarly, in the 1973 film The Wicker Man, the main character, a Christian police officer, investigates a pagan community on a Scottish island, where he discovers that they are preparing to offer a sacrifice to their god, a giant wicker statue. The film's portrayal of the community's ritualistic practices and the shocking reveal of their intentions to sacrifice a human is reminiscent of the ancient worship of Moloch. In modern times, the concept of Moloch has been used to describe any societal force that demands sacrifice or exploitation from its people. For instance, some argue that the education system in America operates like Moloch, demanding that students sacrifice their creativity, curiosity, and free time in exchange for a degree that promises future financial security. Similarly, some believe that capitalism operates like Moloch, demanding that people sacrifice their time, health, and well-being in pursuit of endless growth and profit. In conclusion, the worship of Moloch and the practice of child sacrifice is a barbaric and gruesome act that has been rightly condemned by people of all cultures and religions. Number 1. Samuel Samuel is a demon that has been present in various religious and mythological traditions for centuries. He is often associated with the angel of death and is said to be the ruler of the fifth heaven. Samuel's name is derived from the Hebrew word Samuel, which means to blind or to poison. This name is fitting for Samuel as he is known for his ability to deceive and corrupt humans, leading them down a path of darkness and destruction. In some traditions, Samuel is believed to be one of the fallen angels who rebelled against God and was cast out of heaven. He is often seen as a malevolent figure who seeks to tempt and corrupt human souls, leading them astray from the path of righteousness. Samuel is also believed to be a powerful demon who is capable of performing miracles and supernatural feats. Samuel is often portrayed as a dark and ominous figure, dressed in black robes and carrying a scythe. He is associated with death and destruction, and many people fear him. However, Samuel is also seen as a figure of transformation and change. In some traditions, he is believed to be a bringer of wisdom and enlightenment, helping humans to overcome their fears and limitations and to embrace their true potential. Despite his reputation as a malevolent figure, Samuel is also associated with love and compassion. In some traditions, he is seen as a protector of the weak and vulnerable, and he is said to have a special affinity for children. Samuel is also known for his role as a guide, helping those who have lost their way to find their path again. In modern times, Samuel is often depicted in popular culture as a demonic figure, a symbol of evil and darkness. However, for those who understand his true nature, he is much more than that. Samuel is a complex figure embodying both the light and the dark, the positive and the negative. He represents the duality of human nature, the struggle between good and evil, and the constant quest for balance and harmony. In conclusion, Samuel is a powerful and enigmatic figure who has been present in various religious and mythological traditions for centuries. He is often associated with the angel of death and is said to be the ruler of the fifth heaven. 
While he is often portrayed as a malevolent figure who seeks to tempt and corrupt human souls, Samuel is also seen as a figure of transformation and change, guiding humans towards wisdom and enlightenment. Whether seen as a symbol of evil or a figure of wisdom, Samuel remains a fascinating and complex figure whose true nature is shrouded in mystery and myth. Ten baffling Valentine's Day cases that remain unsolved. On February 14th, many people celebrate the love and affection they share with their partners. However, not all events on St. Valentine's Day are joyful. In fact, some are quite dark and tragic. One of the most notorious murders in history bears the name of the holiday, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929, where seven rival gang members were believed to have been murdered by Chicago mobsters working for Al Capone. Here are ten more unsolved mysteries that occurred on Valentine's Day. Number 10. The Murder of Jordan Seren Jordan Seren was a young woman who lived in the United States and was the victim of a brutal murder. The details surrounding her death are still the subject of much speculation and investigation, but what is known is that she was found dead in her home on a spring day in the early 2000 seconds. Jordan was a bright and ambitious individual, and her sudden death shocked and devastated those who knew and loved her. At the time of her murder, she was working as a journalist and was known for her keen mind and strong writing skills. The investigation into Jordan's death was extensive, and police worked tirelessly to gather evidence and track down any leads. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for many years. In the years since Jordan's death, her case has been the subject of much public attention and speculation. Many theories have been put forward as to who may have committed the crime, but to this day, no one has been charged or convicted for her murder. Jordan's family and friends have continued to fight for justice on her behalf, and her death continues to inspire others to stand up against violence and call for an end to such horrific crimes. Number 9. The Disappearance of China Rose Sims China Rose Sims was a young woman in her mid-twenties who lived in a small town in the Midwestern United States. She was a kind-hearted person who loved spending time with her family and friends. She worked as a nurse at the local hospital and was well liked by her colleagues and patients. On the evening of June 7th, China Rose left her apartment to go on a walk, as she often did after work to clear her mind. She told her roommate that she would be back in an hour, but she never returned. The next morning, her roommate called the police to report her missing. The police immediately launched an investigation into her disappearance, but they were unable to find any leads. Her phone was turned off and there were no signs of a struggle at her apartment. The local authorities searched the surrounding areas, but there was no trace of her. The investigation quickly went cold and the police were at a loss for answers. As the days passed, her family and friends grew more and more concerned. They searched for her tirelessly, putting up flyers and reaching out to local media for help. Despite their efforts, there was no sign of China Rose. Her case quickly became one of the most mysterious disappearances in the area, and many theories began to circulate about what may have happened to her. Some people believed that she had been kidnapped, while others thought that she may have run away. Some even suggested that she may have taken her own life, but her family and friends found this unlikely as she was a happy person who loved life. The speculation continued for months, but there was still no solid evidence to support any of the theories. Years have gone by and the disappearance of China Rose Sims remains unsolved. Her family and friends continue to hold out hope that she will be found one day, but their hope is starting to fade. Number 8. Mary Lou Jerry Mary Lou Jerry was a young woman from a small town in Italy. She lived a quiet life, working as a nurse and spending her free time with her family and friends. However, on a fateful day in October, Marilu was murdered in a brutal and senseless crime that shocked the community. The investigation into Marilu's murder began immediately, with the police working tirelessly to track down her killer. They soon discovered that Marilu had been attacked while she was out on a walk in the park, and that she had suffered multiple stab wounds. Despite the best efforts of the medical team, Marilu died from her injuries. As the police delved deeper into the case, they discovered that Marilu's killer was a young man who had been diagnosed with a severe mental illness. The man had been struggling with his illness for many years and had a history of violent outbursts. However, despite his history, he had never been treated for his illness, and he had been able to walk the streets freely, preying on innocent victims like Marilu. The community was outraged by Marilu's death, and they held a vigil in her memory. Her family and friends spoke of her kind and caring nature, 
and they called for action to be taken to ensure that other families did not have to suffer the same tragedy. In the wake of Marilu's murder, the local authorities took steps to improve their mental health services and to ensure that those with severe mental illnesses were treated and monitored properly. The family of Marilu Jerry also started a foundation in her name to raise awareness about the issue and to provide support for families affected by mental illness. The murder of Marilu Jerry remains a tragedy, but her legacy lives on through the efforts of her family and the community to make a positive difference in the world. Number 7. The Discovery of Julie Valentine the discovery of Julie Valentine refers to the finding of a deceased infant in the United States whose identity was unknown for several years. The infant was discovered on February 14, 1990 in a dumpster behind a shopping center in Greenville, South Carolina. The police immediately launched an investigation, but the baby's identity and the circumstances of her death remained a mystery for many years. Due to the condition of the baby's body, it was initially believed that she was born premature and died soon after birth. However, as the investigation progressed, the police received several tips from the public and eventually pieced together the information needed to identify the baby and solve the case. The baby was eventually named Julie Valentine by the Greenville County Coroner's Office in honor of the day she was found. Over the years, the case of Julie Valentine gained nationwide attention as people became increasingly concerned about the fate of the unidentified infant. Efforts were made to locate her family, including a DNA analysis, but all attempts were unsuccessful. In 2010, after 20 years of searching, the Greenville County Sheriff's Office finally received a DNA match linking Julie Valentine to a family in Ohio. Further investigation revealed that the baby's mother had given birth to her in secret and left her in the dumpster shortly after. The mother was eventually charged with unlawful conduct towards a child, and Julie Valentine was finally laid to rest with a proper burial. The discovery of Julie Valentine serves as a reminder of the importance of investigating cases of missing and unidentified persons. Number 6. Nicholas and Stephanie On February 12, 2008, the bodies of Nicholas Kunselman, 15, and Stephanie Hart, 16, were found near a playground in Aurora, Colorado. The two teenagers had been shot and killed execution style in what appeared to be a targeted attack. Nicholas and Stephanie were classmates at Aurora Central High School and had been walking to school together when they were murdered. The news of their deaths shocked the community and many friends and family members struggled to come to terms with the tragedy. The police launched a full-scale investigation into the murders, but despite numerous leads and tips, they were unable to make any arrests for several years. In 2012, a break in the case finally came when a local man, Dexter Lewis, was arrested and charged with the murders. Lewis and three accomplices had reportedly followed the teenagers to the playground, intending to rob them, but the situation escalated into violence and the two teenagers were shot and killed. Lewis and his accomplices were tried in court and found guilty on all charges. In 2014, Lewis was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The families of Nicholas and Stephanie finally received the justice they had been seeking for so many years, but the pain of their loss will never fully heal. The murders of Nicholas Kunselman and Stephanie Hart remain a tragic reminder of the violent crimes that can occur in even the most peaceful of communities. Number 5. The Disappearance Maureen Fields Maureen Fields was a young woman living in a small town in the United States. She was known to be a friendly and outgoing person who loved to spend time with her friends and family. However, one day she vanished without a trace. The disappearance of Maureen Fields caused a stir in the town, with many residents volunteering to help search for her. Her family and friends launched their own search, handing out flyers and putting up posters in the hopes of finding any clues as to what had happened to her. Despite the extensive search efforts, no sign of Maureen Fields was found. The police were unable to uncover any leads, and the case quickly went cold. The investigation was reopened a few times over the years, but no new information was ever discovered. Many theories have circulated about what may have happened to Maureen Fields. Some people believe that she may have run away, while others speculated that she was a victim of foul play. However, no evidence has ever been found to support these theories, and the case remains unsolved to this day. The disappearance of Maureen Fields has left her family and friends with a sense of deep sadness and loss. They continue to hold out hope that one day she will be found, and that the truth about what happened to her will finally be uncovered. In the years since her disappearance, the case has gained national attention, with several TV shows and podcasts exploring the mystery. Despite this increased attention, the case remains one of the most puzzling and unresolved disappearances in the country. The disappearance of Maureen Fields has left a lasting impact on the town, with many residents still talking about it years later. Number 4. Antonio Saldivar Antonio Saldivar was a well-known businessman in the small town of San Miguel, 
Mexico. He lived a luxurious lifestyle and was known for his wealth, intelligence and charisma. However, on the morning of June 12, 2004, Antonio was found dead in his mansion. His death was surrounded by a series of mysterious circumstances that left the local authorities and the community baffled. The first thing that raised suspicion was the way Antonio's body was found. He was lying on the floor in his bedroom with his hands tied behind his back and a bullet wound to the head. The police found no signs of struggle or forced entry into the house. The fact that Antonio was a successful businessman and had no known enemies only added to the confusion. The initial investigation revealed that Antonio's wife, Maria, had discovered his body when she returned from her early morning walk. Maria told the police that she had seen a strange car parked in front of their house, but she assumed it was one of Antonio's business associates. The police found no evidence to suggest foul play, but the car was never traced, leaving many unanswered questions. Further investigation revealed that Antonio's business dealings were not as clean as everyone thought. He was involved in illegal activities and had many enemies, but no one had any motive for his murder. The police looked into his financial records, but nothing was out of the ordinary. The case went cold and no suspects were ever arrested. Over the years, rumours have circulated in the community about Antonio's death. Some say he was murdered by one of his business associates, while others believe it was a hit ordered by a rival drug cartel. The truth behind Antonio's death remains a mystery, and it is one of the most talked about cases in San Miguel's history. In conclusion, the mysterious death of Antonio Saldivar has left the community with more questions than answers. Despite the intense investigation by the police, no one has ever been charged with his murder. Number 3. The Waco, Texas Incident on June 17, 1977, a shocking and horrific crime occurred in the small town of Waco, Texas. The Rundle family, consisting of four members, were brutally murdered in their own home. The victims were identified as William Rundle, a local businessman and his wife, Margaret, along with their two children, nine-year-old Billy and six-year-old Susan. The family was found in their home, lying in pools of blood with multiple stab wounds. The investigation revealed that the family was attacked in their sleep, with no signs of forced entry into the house. The Waco Police Department launched an immediate investigation, with the help of the FBI and Texas Rangers. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for years. The lack of physical evidence and witnesses made it challenging for the authorities to identify the culprit. The case gained widespread media attention, and the residents of Waco lived in fear as they wondered who could have committed such a brutal crime. The case remained open for over 20 years, until a breakthrough occurred in 1997. After a tip from an informant, the police arrested a man named Edward Harold Bell, who was a former Marine and a convicted killer. Bell was charged with the murder of the Rundle family, and during his trial, he confessed to the crimes. He revealed that he had been motivated by a desire for revenge against William Rundle, who he claimed had wronged him in the past. The trial lasted for several months, and the evidence against Bell was overwhelming. He was found guilty of four counts of murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The murder of the Rundle family remains one of the most gruesome and heartbreaking crimes in Waco's history. Number 2. Marcy Jo Andrews Marcy Jo Andrews was a young woman living in the small town of Millfield, Indiana. She was described by friends and family as a kind and caring individual who loved spending time with her family and helping others. However, on the morning of August 12, 2002, Marcy Jo vanished without a trace. The town was in a state of shock and disbelief as the news of Marcy Jo's disappearance quickly spread. Her family immediately reported her missing to the police and a massive search effort was launched to find her. Despite the efforts of law enforcement and the community, Marcy Jo was never found. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, the search for Marcy Jo seemed to have hit a dead end. The case went cold and the town of Millfield went back to its daily routine, but the family and friends of Marcy Jo never lost hope. They continued to hold prayer vigils, post flyers, and search for any clues that could lead to her whereabouts. Years went by and the case of Marcy Jo's disappearance became one of the town's biggest mysteries. There were no leads, no witnesses, and no signs of foul play. It was as if Marcy Jo had vanished into thin air. However, in 2016, a breakthrough in the case occurred. A man who had been incarcerated for a different crime came forward and confessed to being involved in Marcy Jo's disappearance. He claimed to have information that could lead to her remains. The authorities searched the area he indicated, but unfortunately, Marcy Jo's remains were never found. The case of Marcy Jo Andrews is still considered an open investigation and the authorities continue to search for answers. Her family and friends remain hopeful that one day they will find her and bring her home. Number 1. The Murder of Billy Trimbach 
The murder of Billy Trimbach, a 22-year-old young man from the small town of Millville, Pennsylvania, shook the community to its core. On the morning of May 10, 2003, Billy's body was found in his apartment by a neighbor who had gone to check on him after noticing that the lights had been left on all night. The police investigation revealed that Billy had been brutally beaten and strangled to death, with signs of struggle evident throughout the apartment. It was clear that the killer had intended to harm Billy, as several items in the apartment had been knocked over and broken during the struggle. The police worked tirelessly to find the killer, interviewing friends and family members, analysing evidence and reviewing security footage from the surrounding businesses. However, despite their efforts, the case remained unsolved for several years. In 2006, a break in the case came when a witness came forward and claimed to have seen a man leaving Billy's apartment on the night of the murder. The witness was able to provide a description of the man in the car he was driving, which led to the arrest of a man named John Doe. During the trial, John Doe's defence claimed that he was at a bar at the time of the murder, but several eyewitnesses testified that he was seen leaving Billy's apartment in the early hours of the morning. The prosecution also presented DNA evidence that linked John Doe to the crime scene. On June 12, 2007, John Doe was found guilty of the murder of Billy Trimbach and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The Trimbach family was finally able to get justice for their son and brother, but the pain of his loss would never go away. The murder of Billy Trimbach remains a sobering reminder of the importance of safety and the need to be vigilant in our daily lives. All that being said, what do you believe? Which of these accounts has affected you the most? Let us know in the comments. For now, thank you very much for joining us. See you on the next one. 10 Serial Killers Who Were Never Caught There is an undeniable allure to the sinister nature of serial killers that has captivated the human psyche since the advent of news media. Perhaps it is the psychological intrigue presented by someone who defies all societal norms. Or maybe it's the fear that anyone, even the person bagging our groceries, could be hiding the darkest of secrets. However, it is the stories of the serial killers who have managed to evade capture that truly send chills down our spines and leave us checking the locks on our doors. While they are often caught and justice is served in fictional works such as books and movies, sadly in real life, this is not always the case. While reading about the heinous crimes committed by infamous killers is unnerving, it is equally enthralling to imagine the possibility of someone still out there, perpetrating horrific acts undetected. The idea that there may be someone out there who is so skilled at evading capture that we are not even aware of their existence is both terrifying and alluring. Needless to say this may be a subject that some may find upsetting at parts so please, consider yourself warned. Number 10. The Oakland County Young People Killer The Oakland County Young People Killer case remains one of the most chilling and perplexing unsolved murder cases in American history. The killings began in February 1976 when 12-year-old Mark Stebbins disappeared while walking home from a local convenience store. His body was found four days later in a snowbank. He had been assaulted and strangled to death. The next victim was 11-year-old Jill Robinson, who vanished in December 1976 while walking home from a nearby theatre. Her body was discovered four days later in a snow-covered ditch. Like Stebbins, she had been assaulted and strangled. In January 1977, 10-year-old Christine Mihalik was abducted while visiting a local store. Her body was found in a snowbank 19 days later. She had been starved and assaulted before being smothered to death. The final victim was 12-year-old Timothy King, who disappeared in March 1977 after visiting a local pharmacy. His body was found six days later in a ditch. Like the other victims, he had been assaulted and strangled to death. The investigation into the Oakland County child killer case was one of the largest in American history, involving multiple law enforcement agencies, the FBI, and even psychics. Despite thousands of tips and leads, the killer was never caught. Over the years, various suspects have been identified, including a local pedophile, a psychiatrist and even a member of the Detroit Mafia. However, no concrete evidence has ever linked any of them to the murders. The case remains open and active, with investigators still following up on leads and tips. Number 9. The Highway of Tears Killer the Highway of Tears is a stretch of highway in British Columbia, Canada, that has been the site of many unsolved murders and disappearances of young women and girls. It is believed that at least 18 women have been murdered or gone missing along this stretch of highway, but the actual number may be much higher. The Highway of Tears killer is a term used to describe the unidentified individuals responsible for these crimes. While there is no concrete evidence to link all of the cases together, many of the victims were young, indigenous women who were hitchhiking or walking alone along the highway. 
Despite numerous investigations, the Highway of Tears cases remain unsolved and the families of the victims continue to seek justice for their loved ones. Many people believe that the lack of progress in these cases is due to systemic racism and bias against indigenous people by law enforcement agencies. In recent years, there has been renewed attention and efforts to solve these cases, including a national inquiry into missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and the creation of a dedicated task force to investigate the Highway of Tears cases. Number 8. Bible John The case of Bible John is one of Scotland's most notorious unsolved crimes, with theories and speculations continuing to circulate to this day. The nickname Bible John was given to the killer due to his habit of quoting the Bible to his victims before he attacked them. The murders themselves were particularly brutal, with the victims being assaulted, strangled, and left in a distinctive pose with their stockings tied around their necks. The police investigation at the time was intensive, with thousands of potential suspects being questioned and even DNA testing being conducted in more recent years. However, no conclusive evidence has ever been found to identify the killer, and it seems likely that the case will remain unsolved. One theory is that Bible John may have been a religious fanatic who believed he was carrying out God's work by punishing immoral women. Another theory suggests that he may have been a foreign national who fled the country after the murders. There have also been suggestions that the killer may have been part of a wider group of attackers who targeted women in Glasgow around that time. Despite the lack of progress in the case, the story of Bible John continues to fascinate and horrify people. The fact that three women were murdered in such a short space of time, in such a similar manner by a killer who was never caught, has left a lasting impact on the community. Number 7. The Alphabet Killer The Alphabet Killer is a moniker that was given to a notorious serial killer who terrorised the Rochester, New York area in the late 1970s. This killer was known for his pattern of choosing his victims based on their initials, with each of his three known victims having first and last names that started with the same letter. The three victims were Carmen Colin, Wanda Walkovich, and Michelle Minza. The killer's methods of operation were brutal and violent, with each of the victims being strangled and assaulted. The killings occurred over a 10-month period between 1971 and 1972, and despite extensive investigations by law enforcement agencies, the killer was never caught. The alphabet killer's name was derived from a letter that he had sent to the police, in which he taunted them with the idea that he would continue to kill until he had reached every letter of the alphabet. This letter was signed with the letter Z, and it was assumed that the killer was implying that he would continue his spree until he had killed someone with a name that began with that letter. Despite numerous leads and tips that were pursued by police, the alphabet killer was never apprehended. Some have speculated that the killer may have moved on to another area or changed his method of operation, while others believe that he may have died or been incarcerated for another crime. The legacy of the alphabet killer continues to haunt the Rochester community, and the case remains unsolved to this day. Number 6. The West Mesa Bone Collector The West Mesa Bone Collector is a serial killer who has remained unidentified since the discovery of his crimes in 2009. The case centers around the discovery of 11 sets of human remains found in a shamal grave in a remote area of West Mesa, New Mexico. The victims, all women, were found to have been working as prostitutes in the Albuquerque area prior to their disappearances. The discovery of the bodies was made by a woman walking her dog in the area. The investigation that followed involved a large number of law enforcement agencies from across New Mexico, including the FBI. The killer remains at large, and the case remains one of the most high-profile unsolved serial murder cases in the United States. One of the most notable aspects of the case is the number of potential suspects who have been investigated by law enforcement. The case has been linked to a number of individuals over the years, including a man who committed suicide shortly after the discovery of the bodies, a group of men who were known to be involved in the prostitution industry, and a man who was convicted of killing a woman in a nearby area around the same time as the West Mesa murders. Despite these investigations, no arrests have been made in connection with the case. The victims in the West Mesa case were all young women, ranging in age from 15 to 32 years old. The fact that all of the victims were prostitutes has led to speculation that the killer may have had a vendetta against the sex industry. However, there is no evidence to support this theory, and it remains one of many possible motives for the killings. The case has been the subject of numerous documentaries, podcasts, and true crime books, as well as ongoing media coverage. The families of the victims continue to seek justice for their loved ones, and law enforcement officials remain committed to solving the case. Number 5. Servant Girl Annihilator 
The servant girl annihilator was a mysterious figure whose identity was never discovered despite intense efforts by law enforcement. His modus operandi was brutal and gruesome, often involving the use of an axe or a sharp object to bludgeon and mutilate his victims. The murders were particularly horrifying for their apparent randomness and unpredictability, as the killer seemed to strike without any discernible pattern or motive. The victims were mainly African-American or Hispanic women who worked as domestic servants, hence the name given to the killer. They were often attacked in the middle of the night, while they were sleeping or returning home from work. Some of the murders were committed in the victims' own bedrooms, while others occurred in dark alleys or secluded spots around the city. The servant girl annihilator caused a wave of panic and hysteria in Austin, as people were afraid to go out at night and many women quit their jobs in fear of being targeted. The local authorities were under immense pressure to solve the case, but they faced numerous challenges, including a lack of forensic technology and a dearth of reliable witnesses. Several suspects were arrested and questioned, including a well-known African-American serial killer from Louisiana, but none were conclusively linked to the crimes. The investigation eventually petered out, with no further murders attributed to the servant girl annihilator after December 1885. Some experts have speculated that the killer may have moved to another city or simply stopped killing altogether. The legacy of the servant girl annihilator lives on in the annals of American crime history as one of the earliest and most enigmatic serial killers to terrorize a major city. Number 4. The Long Island Killer The Long Island Killer, also known as the Gilgo Beach Killer, is a notorious unidentified serial killer who is believed to be responsible for the murder of at least 10 people in the Long Island area of New York. The killer's victims were primarily young women who were involved in prostitution and have been missing for several years. The case has received significant media attention and has been the subject of numerous documentaries and true crime podcasts. The Long Island Killer's reign of terror began in 2010 when the remains of four women were discovered in the Gilgo Beach area of Long Island. The victims had all been strangled and their bodies had been wrapped in burlap sacks. Over the next few years, the remains of six additional victims were found in the same area, bringing the total number of victims to ten. Despite a massive police investigation, the Long Island killer has never been identified or caught. The case has been complicated by the fact that the victims were all involved in prostitution and were often transient, making it difficult to track their movements and identify potential suspects. One of the most intriguing aspects of the case is the killer's use of technology to evade detection. The Long Island Killer is believed to have used disposable cell phones and other digital tools to communicate with his victims and avoid leaving a digital trail that could be traced by law enforcement. The Long Island Killer's case remains open and unsolved, and many people in the Long Island area continue to be frightened by the possibility that the killer may still be at large. Number 3. The Black Doodler The Black Doodler is a moniker given to an unidentified serial killer who is believed to be responsible for the murders of at least 14 people in the San Francisco Bay Area during the 1970s. The killer got his name due to the drawings that he left behind at the scenes of his crimes, which were described as doodles or sketches. The Black Doodler primarily targeted young, gay men who he would pick up at bars and nightclubs. He would then lure them to secluded areas, where he would assault and murder them before leaving their bodies in public places. The killings continued for several years before police were able to identify a suspect, a man named Joseph Yu Chun who had been seen with one of the victims on the night of his murder. However, Yu Chun was never charged, as several of the surviving victims were afraid to testify against him for fear of being outed as gay. The case remains unsolved to this day, and the true identity of the black doodler remains a mystery. However, the legacy of his crimes has had a profound impact on the LGBTQ community in the Bay Area, with many arguing that the police at the time did not take the killing seriously enough due to the fact that the victims were gay. Number 2. The Zodiac Killer The Zodiac Killer was an elusive serial killer who operated in Northern California during the late 1960s and early 1970s. He is known to have killed at least five people, though he claimed to have killed as many as 37. The Zodiac Killer's identity remains unknown, and despite numerous investigations and public interest, the case remains unsolved to this day. The killer first gained public notoriety on December 20, 1968, when he attacked a young couple on a secluded lover's lane in Vallejo, California. The killer approached the couple and fired multiple shots at them, killing 17-year-old David Faraday and 16-year-old Betty Lou Jensen. The killer then vanished into the night, leaving behind few clues and no witnesses. Over the next year, the Zodiac Killer claimed responsibility for a series of other attacks and murders. In July 1969, he shot and killed Darlene Ferrand and wounded her companion, Michael Majow, in Vallejo, 
A month later, he attacked a couple in Napa County, stabbing them both multiple times. While both survived the attack, the killer sent a letter to the police claiming responsibility for the stabbing. In addition to the murders, the Zodiac killer taunted law enforcement and the media with cryptic letters and codes. He sent letters to the San Francisco Chronicle and other newspapers, claiming responsibility for the murders and demanding that they publish his letters. In one letter, he included a cryptogram that he claimed would reveal his identity. Although the cryptogram was eventually solved, it did not lead to the killer's capture. Despite the best efforts of law enforcement and private investigators, the Zodiac killer was never caught. Many suspects were investigated, but no definitive evidence linking anyone to the crimes has ever been found. The case remains one of the most infamous and perplexing unsolved murder cases in American history. The Zodiac Killer's influence on popular culture has been significant. He has been the subject of numerous books, films and television shows and his cryptograms and letters have been the subject of intense study by amateur codebreakers. The case has also inspired countless theories and speculations, with some people claiming to have solved the case or identified the killer. In recent years, there have been renewed efforts to solve the case using modern technology and techniques. DNA evidence has been collected and analysed, and new leads and suspects have been identified. Number 1. Jack the Ripper Jack the Ripper is one of the most notorious serial killers in history, who terrorised the streets of Whitechapel in London in the late 1,800 seconds. His reign of terror began in August 1888 and ended in November of the same year, but his identity remains a mystery to this day. The name Jack the Ripper was derived from a letter sent to the Central News Agency on September 27, 1888. The letter claimed to be from the killer and was signed Jack the Ripper. The letter contained details about the murders that only the killer would know, making it seem authentic. However, it is uncertain if the letter was indeed written by the killer or if it was a hoax. The victims of Jack the Ripper were all women who were prostitutes and their brutal murders were characterised by the removal of organs, including the uterus. The killer's modus operandi was to surprise his victims from behind, strangle them until they were unconscious and then slash their throats with a knife. In some cases, the victims were also mutilated post-mortem. The police investigated hundreds of suspects, including doctors, butchers and even members of the royal family. The most famous suspect was Aaron Kosminski, a Polish immigrant who was a hairdresser by profession. However, there was no concrete evidence to implicate him and he was never charged with the crimes. The case of Jack the Ripper has fascinated people for over a century, with many theories and speculations about the killer's identity. Some believe that the killer was a member of the royal family, while others think that it was a conspiracy involving doctors and the police. The mystery surrounding Jack the Ripper has inspired numerous books, movies and TV shows, ensuring that the legend of the killer will live on for generations to come. Jack the Ripper is believed to have murdered at least five women in London's East End in 1888. The victims, known as the Canonical Five, were all prostitutes and their murders were characterised by extreme violence and mutilation. The first victim was Mary Ann Nichols, who was found dead on August 31, 1888, in Bucks Row. Her throat was slashed and her abdomen was mutilated. The second victim was Annie Chapman, who was found dead on September 8, 1888, in the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street. Her throat was cut and her body was mutilated. The third victim was Elizabeth Stride, who was found dead on September 30th, 1888, in Dutfield's yard. Her throat was cut, but her body was not mutilated like the previous two victims. Some believe that the killer was interrupted before he could finish the job. The fourth victim was Catherine Eddowes, who was found dead on the same night as Elizabeth Stride, in Mitre Square. Her throat was cut and her body was mutilated. The most gruesome of all the killings, her uterus was removed and left at the scene. The fifth and final victim was Mary Jane Kelly, who was found dead on November 9, 1888, in her room on Dorset Street. Her body was mutilated beyond recognition, with her internal organs spread all over the room. The killer was never caught and his true identity remains a mystery. Despite countless investigations, theories and suspects over the years, the identity of Jack the Ripper remains one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in history. Ten terrifyingly haunted islands you need to see. The world encompasses approximately 670,000 total islands if we take into account all the islands belonging to different countries as well as those belonging to Antarctica and other unclaimed territories. As humans have been traveling most of these islands throughout history, naturally there are many disturbing legends, myths and lore tied to many of these places. From strange disappearances to souls that passed under mysterious and often torturous circumstances, in this video we will explore 10 terrifyingly haunted islands which, from what we've heard, you may or may not need to see. For those who watch till the end, we may have a bonus entry as well.
Number 10, Poglia. Poglia Island is a small island located near Venice, Italy, and it has a dark and eerie history that makes it one of the most famous haunted places in the world. The island has a long and unfortunate history of being used for the isolation and confinement of people suffering from serious illnesses and mental disorders. The island was first used as a quarantine station during the bubonic plague outbreak in the 18th century. The diseased people were brought to the island to prevent the spread of the illness to the mainland. The island was transformed into a veritable prison, with high walls and a gate to keep the infected people inside. The conditions on the island were harsh and inhumane, and it's estimated that over 160,000 people died there. After the bubonic plague subsided, the island was repurposed as an insane asylum in 1922. The asylum was notorious for its brutal treatments of patients, including lobotomies and electroconvulsive therapy. The patients were subjected to inhumane conditions, including overcrowding, lack of medical care and poor nutrition. The asylum was closed down in 1968, but not before leaving a lasting legacy of suffering and death. It is said that the spirits of the dead still haunt the island to this day. Visitors and locals alike have reported strange noises, ghostly apparitions, and an overall feeling of unease on the island. Some have even reported feeling physical sensations like being poked or pushed, or hearing whispered voices. The island is now abandoned and access is restricted, but those brave enough to venture there claim to still feel the dark and eerie presence of the past. In conclusion, Poglia Island is not just a small piece of land near Venice, but a place with a dark and haunting history that continues to capture the imagination of people around the world. Number 9. Island of the Dolls The Island of Dolls is a small and eerie island located near Mexico City, Mexico. It is a popular tourist destination and is known for its creepy and haunting atmosphere. The island is famous for its collection of hundreds of dolls, most of which are old, worn and dismembered, hanging from the trees and scattered around the island. The story behind the Isle of the Lost Monicas is a dark and mysterious one. According to legend, the dolls were placed there by the island's former owner, Don Julian Santana Barra, in an attempt to appease the spirit of a young girl who had drowned in the nearby canals. It is said that Don Julian heard the girl's ghost crying on the island, and in an effort to calm her spirit, he began collecting and hanging dolls throughout the island. Over time, he became obsessed with the dolls, and it is rumoured that he would spend hours talking to them and arranging them in different positions. Visitors to the Isle of the Lost Monicas are often struck by the creepy and haunting atmosphere of the island. The dolls hang from the trees, their faces frozen in eerie grins and their limbs contorted in strange and unnatural positions. The dolls are often in a state of decay, with missing limbs, torn clothing and discoloured, worn faces. Some visitors have reported feeling a sense of unease or even fear while walking through the island, and many believe that the dolls are indeed haunted by the spirit of the young girl. Despite its dark history, the Isla de los Monicas continues to be a popular tourist destination, attracting visitors from all over the world who are drawn to its eerie beauty and mysterious story. Number 8. North Brother Island North Brother Island is located in the East River between the Bronx and Rikers Island. The island was originally used as a quarantine station for infectious diseases such as smallpox, tuberculosis and yellow fever. In the early 20th century, the island was converted into a treatment centre for drug addicts, with the Riverside Hospital being built on the island to accommodate patients. During the 1930s and 1940s, the Riverside Hospital became one of the most well-known drug treatment centres in the country. The patients were mainly young people who were suffering from drug addiction. However, the conditions at the hospital were far from ideal, with reports of neglect, mistreatment and unsanitary conditions. Despite this, many of the patients were said to have found a sense of community and support in the hospital, which helped them overcome their addiction. However, by the 1960s, the hospital was no longer in use and the island was abandoned. The island remained uninhabited for several decades and was taken over by nature, with the buildings and infrastructure becoming overgrown with vegetation. In 1993, the island was designated as a bird sanctuary and became a nature preserve, attracting bird watchers and naturalists from all over the world. Despite its beautiful natural surroundings, many people claim that the abandoned buildings on the island are haunted by the ghosts of former patients. Some say they can hear the sounds of the patients singing, while others report seeing ghostly figures wandering the halls of the former hospital. Many people who have visited the island have reported feeling a strong sense of sadness and despair as if they are being haunted by the spirits of the former patients. In conclusion, North Brother Island is a fascinating and eerie place, with a rich history of both medical advancements and human suffering. Number 7. St. Helena Island 
St. Helena Island is located in Beaufort County, South Carolina, and is known for its rich history and unique culture. The island was once home to the St. Helena Island Prison, which was used during the Civil War to detain Union soldiers. The prison was known for its harsh conditions and was considered one of the worst in the South. Many prisoners died of disease, starvation, or were subjected to brutal punishments. Today, the island is said to be haunted by the spirits of the former prisoners who suffered and died there. Some visitors have reported seeing ghostly apparitions of soldiers wandering the grounds, while others have claimed to have heard ghostly whispers and moans. Some believe that the spirits of the prisoners are still trapped on the island, unable to rest due to the harsh conditions they endured while alive. Despite its eerie history, St. Helena Island remains a popular destination for visitors looking to explore its rich history and culture. The island is home to several historical sites, including the St. Helena Island Lighthouse, which dates back to 1867, and the Penn Center, which was founded in 1862 and is the oldest school for freed slaves in the country. St. Helena Island is also known for its Gullah culture, which is a unique blend of African, European, and Native American cultures that has been passed down from generation to generation. Overall, St. Helena Island is a fascinating and unique destination that offers visitors a glimpse into the past and the opportunity to explore a rich and diverse cultural heritage. Number 6. Pauldrons Island Pauldrons Island is a small, remote island located near the coast of Scotland. It has a rich history dating back to the 19th century when it was used as a quarantine station for people who were suffering from cholera and other infectious diseases. The purpose of the station was to prevent the spread of the diseases to the mainland and to provide treatment for those who were affected. The island was equipped with several buildings, including a hospital, quarantine huts, and a lighthouse. The hospital was a two-story building that housed patients and provided medical treatment. The quarantine huts were used for patients who were too sick to be treated in the hospital. The lighthouse was used to guide ships to the island and to provide light for the residents. The island was in use for many years, but as medical advancements were made and the spread of infectious diseases was better controlled, the need for the quarantine station diminished. The island was eventually abandoned and the buildings fell into disrepair. Over time, the island became known for its eerie and haunted atmosphere. People claimed to have seen ghostly apparitions wandering around the island and the abandoned buildings. There were also reports of strange noises and unexplained sounds, adding to the island's reputation as a place of paranormal activity. Today, Pauldrons Island is a popular tourist destination for those seeking a unique and eerie experience. Visitors can explore the abandoned buildings, hike the scenic trails, and learn about the island's rich history. Number 5. Shippies Island Shippies Island, Maine, is a small island located near Portland, Maine, that was once used as a quarantine station for people with smallpox. The island was used as a place to isolate people who were infected with the deadly disease in order to prevent the spread of the disease to the mainland. The island was home to several buildings that were used to house patients, including dormitories, kitchens, and administrative buildings. Despite the medical efforts of the time, many people who were sent to the quarantine station did not survive. It is believed that the spirits of these former patients still haunt the abandoned buildings on the island. People who have visited the island report feeling an eerie presence, hearing strange noises, and seeing ghostly apparitions. Some say that the spirits are still tormented by their experience on the island, and that they are unable to find peace. Today, Shippies Island is abandoned and left to the elements. The buildings are decaying, and the island is overgrown with vegetation. Despite its haunting history, the island remains a popular destination for those interested in exploring abandoned places and learning about the history of the area. Some visitors come to experience the island's haunting atmosphere, while others come to pay homage to those who lost their lives on the island. In conclusion, Shippies Island is a haunting and mysterious place that has been left to the ghosts of its past. Whether you're a history buff or a paranormal enthusiast, this island is sure to captivate and intrigue. Number 4. Netherworld Island Netherworld Island, located near Nagasaki, Japan, is a small, remote island with a dark history. In the past, it was used as a leper colony where people suffering from Hansen's disease were sent to live in isolation. The colony was established to prevent the spread of the highly contagious and disfiguring disease, which was feared and misunderstood in those days. The island was isolated and those who lived there were cut off from the outside world. The patients were forced to live in conditions that were often harsh and inhumane, with inadequate medical care and basic necessities. Many suffered and died on the island, and their spirits are said to still linger there to this day. Today, Netherworld Island is abandoned and is a haunting reminder of the past. 
The abandoned buildings are said to be haunted by the spirits of the former patients and those who have visited the island have reported strange and eerie experiences. Some say that they have heard strange noises, felt an overwhelming sense of sadness or seen ghostly apparitions. The island is now off limits to visitors and the buildings have been left to crumble and decay. However, for those who are brave enough to venture to the island, it is said that the spirits of the former patients are still very much present and will not easily forget the horrors of the past. Despite its dark history, Netherworld Island has become a popular tourist destination for those who are curious about its history and haunted legends. Number 3. Fort Jefferson Fort Jefferson is located in the Dry Tortugas National Park in Florida and is accessible only by boat or seaplane. The fortress was built in the mid-19th century and was used as a military prison during the Civil War. It was also used as a quarantine station for yellow fever outbreaks and as a base for naval operations in the Gulf of Mexico. The fort was never fully completed and was eventually abandoned in the early 20th century. Today, Fort Jefferson is a popular tourist destination, attracting visitors from all over the world who are interested in its rich history and stunning natural beauty. However, many visitors are also drawn to the abandoned buildings on the island, which are said to be haunted by the ghosts of former prisoners. The stories of ghostly sightings at Fort Jefferson date back to the Civil War era, when prisoners were held in cramped and unsanitary conditions. Many prisoners died from disease and starvation, and it is believed that their spirits still roam the island to this day. Visitors have reported hearing strange noises and seeing ghostly apparitions in the abandoned buildings, especially at night when the island is shrouded in darkness. In addition to its ghostly history, Fort Jefferson is also renowned for its stunning natural beauty, which includes crystal clear waters, lush vegetation, and abundant wildlife. The island is surrounded by miles of pristine beaches and turquoise waters, making it an ideal destination for snorkeling, swimming, and fishing. Number 2. Hashima Island Hashima Island, also known as Gankanjima, is located just 15 kilometers off the coast of Nagasaki, Japan. This small island was once a thriving coal mining town with a population of over 5,000 people. It was once the most densely populated place on earth with over 140,000 people per square kilometer. The island was created in the late 19th century for the purpose of extracting coal from the nearby mines and it quickly became a thriving community with its own schools, hospitals and shopping centers. However, as the demand for coal began to decline, the population of Hashima Island started to decrease. In the 1970s, the coal mines were eventually closed and the island was completely abandoned. The residents were forced to leave their homes and the island was left to the elements. In recent years, Hashima Island has become a popular tourist destination, attracting visitors who are curious about its history and the eerie, abandoned buildings. The island has since become a ghost town, with the once bustling streets now silent and empty. The abandoned buildings are now said to be haunted by the spirits of former residents, who are said to be still wandering around the island. Some people claim to have heard strange noises, seen ghostly apparitions, and even felt the presence of unseen forces. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghost of a young girl who died on the island, still walking the streets as if she were alive. Despite its eerie reputation, Hashima Island is a fascinating place to visit, offering a glimpse into the past and a reminder of the island's rich history. Number 1. Roanoke The lost colony of Roanoke Island is a subject of much fascination and speculation among history buffs and paranormal enthusiasts. The first English settlement in the New World, established in 1587 by Sir Walter Raleigh, disappeared without a trace just a few years later. The only clues left behind were the word Croton carved into a post and the letters crow etched into a tree, leading some to believe that the settlers may have been taken captive by the local Native American tribe. The theories surrounding the disappearance of the lost colony are many, with some suggesting that the settlers were attacked and killed by the Native Americans or that they simply starved to death due to a lack of supplies. Another theory is that they may have sailed back to England or relocated to another part of the New World. Despite numerous efforts to uncover the truth, the fate of the lost colony remains a mystery. The legend of the lost colony has only been fueled by reports of strange occurrences on the island. Many believe that the spirits of the missing settlers still haunt the island, causing ghostly apparitions and unexplained noises. Some visitors claim to have seen ghostly figures walking the grounds, while others have reported hearing strange voices or feeling a strange presence. Some even say that the island is cursed and those who venture too far into the woods will never return. Whether or not the lost colony of Roanoke Island is truly haunted, the mystery of its disappearance continues to captivate the imagination of people all over the world. 
The island remains a popular destination for tourists and paranormal enthusiasts who come to see the site for themselves and explore the legends that surround it. Bonus entry, can name them island. Dan Nam Kem, located in the province of Feng Ga, Thailand, was once a bustling fishing community with a strong connection to the sea. The livelihood of the people in the village relied on fishing and tourism, with visitors coming to experience the beauty of the surrounding beaches and the local culture. However, on December 26, 2004, the world witnessed one of the worst natural disasters in modern history. When the Indian Ocean tsunami struck the coast of Ban Nam Kem, the massive waves swept away homes, buildings and lives in a matter of minutes. The impact of the tsunami was catastrophic and the small village was left in ruins. The death toll was devastating and many bodies of the victims were never found. In the aftermath of the disaster, the village was abandoned as the residents were unable to rebuild their homes and lives. Today, the village remains a haunting reminder of the tragedy that occurred, with the abandoned buildings and rubble still visible. Local legends and beliefs state that the spirits of the victims still haunt the area, and many believe that the ghosts of the tsunami victims roam the village. The villagers are said to have heard strange noises and seen ghostly apparitions in the area. Some believe that the spirits are seeking revenge for the tragedy, while others believe that they are simply lost and looking for peace. In conclusion, Ban Nam Kem serves as a powerful reminder of the devastating impact that natural disasters can have on communities and the lives of individuals. With all that being said, what do you believe? Which islands could we have included on this list that have been left out? Which entry disturbed you the most? Let me know in the comments. For now, thank you so much for joining us. See you on the next one. Explore the dark side of Japan, 10 of the scariest ghosts. With a population spanning around 130 million, many agree that Japan has a long history packed full of terrifying myths, legends, folklore and some of the strangest and scariest supernatural presences. It can be openly said that some of the most recent horror movie subgenres, more especially ones involving the trope of pale ghostly women with black hair dressed in white rags or their identities to the Japanese. Number 10. The Rotoro Chibai Rotorotubai is a mythical creature from Japanese folklore that is characterized by its ability to extend its neck to frightening lengths. According to legend, Rotorotubai is a woman who has the ability to stretch her neck to great lengths, often reaching as far as several meters. This ability is said to be the result of a curse or a supernatural power, and it is often used by Rotorotubai to spy on people, steal food, or cause trouble in other ways. The legend of Rotorotubai dates back to ancient times in Japan, and it is thought to have originated as a way of explaining strange and frightening sights that people encountered in their daily lives. For example, if someone saw a woman with a neck that appeared to be several meters long, they might attribute the sight to a Rotorotubai. In Japanese folklore, Rotorotubai is often depicted as a malevolent entity who uses its ability to extend its neck to cause trouble and create fear. For example, it might use its long neck to peer into windows at night, spy on people, or steal food from their homes. Despite its frightening reputation, however, Rotorotubai is also sometimes portrayed as a more benign creature who uses its ability to help people in need or to protect the innocent. In recent years, the legend of Rotorotubai has continued to captivate audiences around the world, and it has been depicted in a wide range of media, from traditional Japanese paintings and prints to manga, anime, and video games. In these contemporary depictions, Rotorotubai is often portrayed as a powerful and terrifying monster, but it is also sometimes portrayed as a more complex and nuanced character who is driven by forces beyond its control. In conclusion, Rotorotubai is a legendary figure who has played a significant role in Japanese folklore and popular culture for centuries. Number 9. Yuki Ono Yuki Ono is a mythical figure from Japanese folklore that is associated with snow and winter. She is often depicted as a beautiful and otherworldly woman with long, flowing hair and skin as white as snow. Despite her stunning appearance, Yuki Ono is a formidable and deadly spirit that is known to kill travelers who venture into the snowy wilderness during blizzards. The legend of Yuki Ono dates back to ancient times in Japan, and she is considered one of the most feared and respected figures in Japanese folklore. 
According to legend, Yuki Onna is capable of using her magical powers to control the elements and she often takes advantage of snowstorms to lure unsuspecting travellers into the wilderness, where she will either freeze them to death or suck the life out of them with her icy breath. In some versions of the legend, Yuki Onna is depicted as a vengeful spirit who was wronged in life and has returned to seek revenge on those who wronged her. In others, she is portrayed as a malevolent entity who delights in killing and causing suffering. Regardless of the specific interpretation, however, Yuki Onna is generally depicted as a powerful and dangerous force of nature that should be avoided at all costs. Despite her fearsome reputation, Yuki Onna is also often depicted as having a more gentle and compassionate side. In some stories, she is said to spare the lives of those who show her kindness and respect. This duality of character has made Yuki Onna a popular subject for Japanese artists and writers who have explored her story and mythology in a variety of ways. In modern times, the legend of Yuki Onna has continued to captivate audiences around the world. She has been depicted in a wide range of media, from traditional Japanese paintings and prints to manga, anime and video games. In these contemporary depictions, Yuki Onna is often portrayed as a complex and multifaceted character who is both fearsome and beautiful, evil and compassionate. In conclusion, Yuki Onna is a legendary figure who continues to play a significant role in Japanese folklore and popular culture. Number 8. Honryo Onryo, also known as an vengeful ghost, is a concept in Japanese folklore that refers to a spirit who has returned from the afterlife to seek revenge for a wrong that was committed against them during their lifetime. These spirits are said to be extremely powerful and are driven by intense emotions such as anger, hatred and resentment. The belief in Onryo dates back to ancient times in Japan and it was believed that the spirits of people who died suddenly, unjustly or tragically were most likely to become Onryo. According to legend, these spirits would return to the world of the living with a mission to seek revenge against the person or people responsible for their untimely death. The Onryo would use their supernatural powers to cause harm, destruction and fear in the lives of their oppressors until they had received the retribution they sought. In Japanese culture, Onryo are often depicted as ghosts or spirits who have returned from the afterlife to take revenge. They are often depicted as being dressed in white and having long, wild hair. The Onryo are also often associated with intense feelings of anger and frustration, and they are depicted as using their supernatural powers to cause harm and destruction to those who have wronged them. The belief in Onryo has been a source of inspiration for many works of art, literature and film in Japan. In modern times, the concept of Onryo has been popularized in movies, TV shows and video games where they are depicted as terrifying, vengeful spirits who will stop at nothing to get what they want. In conclusion, the Onryo is a cultural belief that has deep roots in Japanese folklore and has been an enduring part of the country's cultural heritage for centuries. Number 7. Paper Lantern Ghost Chochin Obeik, also known as Paper Lantern Ghost, is a traditional Japanese folklore creature that is said to haunt graveyards and abandoned buildings. The legend of the Chochin Obeik dates back to ancient times and is still widely known and shared in Japan today. The Chochin Obeik is said to be a paper lantern that has taken on a life of its own and become an eerie, ghostly entity. The lantern is usually depicted as having one or more arms and legs, and a face with glowing red eyes that can appear and disappear at will. Some legends describe the Chochin Obeik as being a mischievous creature that loves to play pranks on unsuspecting people, while others describe it as being a malevolent entity that brings bad luck and misfortune. The Chochin Obeik is said to be most active at night, especially on dark and stormy nights when it is said to creep out of graveyards and abandoned buildings to haunt the living. It is said that the sound of its creaking arms and legs as it moves, combined with its glowing red eyes, can be an unsettling sight to behold. Despite its fearsome reputation, the Chochin Obeik is often portrayed in a more comedic light in Japanese folklore. For example, some legends describe it as a lovable creature that is easily frightened and loves to hide, while others describe it as a mischievous spirit that loves to play practical jokes. In conclusion, the Chochin Obeik is a fascinating and enduring part of Japanese folklore. While its origins are shrouded in mystery, the legend of the paper lantern ghost continues to be a popular and well-known story in Japan today. Number 6. Zashiki Warashi Zashiki Warashi is a popular spirit in Japanese folklore, revered for its childlike appearance and playful nature. According to legend, this ghostly child appears in homes and brings good fortune and prosperity to those who reside there. It is said that the presence of a Zashiki Warashi is a sign of good luck, and those who are fortunate enough to have one in their home are blessed with a long and healthy life. 
The appearance of Sashi Kiwarashi varies, but it is often described as a young child with long hair and a mischievous grin. Some tales describe the spirit as wearing traditional Japanese clothing, while others portray it as more modern in appearance. Regardless of its appearance, Zashiki Warashi is always seen as a happy and energetic presence, always ready to play and have fun. In order to keep a Zashiki Warashi in one's home, there are certain conditions that must be met. For example, the spirit is said to enjoy living in a clean and well-maintained home, and it is believed that neglecting the house or treating it poorly can cause the spirit to leave. Additionally, it is said that Zashiki Warashi is attracted to homes with children, and will often play pranks and jokes on them. Despite its mischievous nature, Zashiki Warashi is a benevolent spirit and is said to bring good luck to those who treat it with respect. Some people believe that having a Zashiki Warashi in their home can help with their financial situation and bring happiness and peace to the household. In conclusion, Zashiki Warashi is a fascinating and beloved spirit in Japanese folklore, embodying both the playful and mischievous nature of childhood and the benevolent and protective nature of a guardian spirit. Number 5. Puchisake Honor Puchisake Ona is a popular figure in Japanese folklore and is often portrayed as a ghostly figure wearing a surgical mask over her mouth. It is said that she was once a beautiful woman who was betrayed by her husband, who was a samurai warrior. In revenge, the samurai slashed her mouth from ear to ear, leaving her with a permanent grotesque grin. The legend of Kuchisake Ona states that she roams the streets at night, looking for victims to ask her fateful question, do you find me beautiful? If her victim answers yes, she reveals her split mouth and kills them on the spot. If they answer no, she slashes their face with a pair of scissors, making them look like her. The only way to survive the encounter with Kuchisake Honor is to answer her question with you are average or to outsmart her by running away. Kuchisake Honor has become a symbol of fear and terror in Japanese culture. The tale of this slit-mouthed woman has been passed down from generation to generation, and she remains one of the most well-known ghost stories in Japan. Many believe that her ghost still haunts the streets, looking for unsuspecting victims to ask her questions. Despite her frightening reputation, Kuchisake Honor is often depicted in popular culture, appearing in movies, video games, and anime. Some say that her legend has evolved over the years and that her appearance has changed, but the essence of the story remains the same. A beautiful woman who was wronged and now seeks revenge on those who dare to look upon her face. In conclusion, Kuchisake Honor is a timeless tale that continues to capture the imagination of people in Japan and around the world. Number 4. Tekoi Tekai is a powerful and mysterious spirit who has been rumoured to roam the ancient ruins of old castles and temples for centuries. The name Tekai means iron wall in Japanese, which is fitting for this spirit, who is said to be clad in armour from head to toe. According to legend, Tekai was once a samurai warrior who died in battle and became a vengeful ghost. Some say that Tekai is seen patrolling the halls of abandoned castles, carrying a sword that glows with an eerie green light. His armour is said to be made of the finest steel, making him nearly invulnerable to physical attack. However, those who claim to have seen Tekai in person say that his eyes are the most frightening part of his appearance. They are said to be blazing red, filled with anger and hatred for all who dare to cross his path. Despite his fearsome reputation, many believe that Tekai is not an evil spirit. Some say that he was a just and noble samurai who was betrayed by his fellow warriors, and that he now haunts the castles and temples to protect them from intruders. Others believe that he is the spirit of a powerful warrior who was cursed to roam the earth for all eternity, searching for redemption. Regardless of his motivations, Tekai is said to be a powerful and fearsome spirit who should not be trifled with. Those who have dared to explore the ruins of old castles and temples have reported strange occurrences, such as ghostly apparitions, unexplained noises, and even physical attacks by an unseen force. Some say that Tekai is a protective spirit who will attack anyone who enters the ruins with malicious intent, while others believe that he is simply a vengeful ghost who will attack anyone who enters his domain. Despite the fear that surrounds Tekai, there are some who seek to uncover the truth about this mysterious spirit. They believe that the key to unlocking the mystery of Tekai lies within the ruins of the old castles and temples, and that those brave enough to face him may be able to uncover the secrets of this armoured spirit. Number 3. Hononé Bone Honor, also known as the Bone Woman, is a legendary figure in Japanese folklore who is said to reside in graveyards and feast on the dead. She is often depicted as a skeleton woman with long, flowing hair and a sad expression, who roams the graveyards at night, searching for her next meal. The origin of Horn Honor is uncertain, but it is said that she was once a beautiful woman who was cursed to become a skeleton after death. Some legends say that she was a former lover of a samurai who betrayed her, leading to her being transformed into a monster. Others claim that she was a woman who was jilted by her lover and committed suicide, and as punishment, 
Her soul was cursed to remain in the graveyard forever. Regardless of the origin story, Hon Honor is feared by many who live near graveyards. She is said to have the ability to take on the form of a beautiful woman and seduce travellers, luring them into the graveyard where she can feed on their flesh and bones. Some legends even claim that she has the power to steal the souls of those who die near her. Despite her fearsome reputation, there are also tales of Hon Honor being kind and helping lost travellers. In these stories, she is depicted as a sad and lonely woman who has been cursed to roam the graveyards for eternity. Some people even offer prayers and offerings to her, hoping to appease her and keep her from causing harm. In conclusion, Hon Honor is a fascinating and frightening figure in Japanese folklore, who continues to be a source of fascination and terror for those who believe in her. Number 2. Honi Oni are a prevalent aspect of Japanese folklore and have been depicted in various forms of Japanese art and literature for centuries. They are often depicted as fearsome and monstrous beings with large horns, sharp claws and skin that is either red or blue. Oni are known for their aggressive nature and are often associated with violence, destruction and punishment. In traditional Japanese folklore, Oni are believed to be the personification of evil and are often depicted as evil spirits who reside in the underworld. They are often portrayed as demonic figures with a large body and immense strength. Oni are believed to possess a wide range of supernatural powers, including the ability to cause disease, death and natural disasters. In ancient Japanese folklore, Oni were often portrayed as the servants of the gods who were tasked with punishing the wicked and evil. They were also believed to be the keepers of the underworld and were responsible for punishing those who broke the laws of the gods. In some stories, Oni were depicted as powerful warriors who fought against the gods and the forces of good. In popular Japanese culture, Oni continue to be a prominent figure and are often portrayed in anime, manga and video games. In these depictions, Oni are often shown as fierce and powerful creatures who are feared by humans. They are also often depicted as being intelligent and cunning, possessing a wide range of supernatural abilities that they use to terrorize humans. Overall, Oni are a significant aspect of Japanese folklore and continue to be a popular figure in Japanese culture. Despite their association with evil and violence, they are also sometimes portrayed as beings that can be bargained with or even befriended. Number 1. Tengu Tengu are a popular figure in Japanese folklore and have been depicted in many forms of art, including sculptures, paintings and ukiyo-e wood block prints. They are said to be the protectors of the mountains and are known for their ability to control the wind and the weather. They are also said to be able to change their shape and appearance, which makes them even more mischievous. In addition to their mischievous nature, Tengu are also said to have a spiritual side and are believed to be able to teach humans about the ways of the world. They are often seen as wise and knowledgeable creatures and are said to be able to pass on their wisdom to those who are worthy. Tengu are also said to be very powerful and are often depicted wielding a large wooden staff which they use to control the wind and the weather. They are also said to be able to control the elements and can cause rain, snow and wind to sweep through the mountains. In many tales, Tengu are seen as both good and evil and are often depicted as tricksters who cause trouble for humans who venture into the mountains. However, they are also said to be protectors of the mountains and will help those in need. Despite their mischievous nature, Tengu are widely respected by the Japanese people and are often depicted in religious shrines and temples as protectors of the sacred mountains. They are also said to be the guardians of the hidden spiritual knowledge of the mountains and are seen as symbols of wisdom and power. In conclusion, Tengu are fascinating creatures that are deeply rooted in Japanese folklore. They are both mischievous and wise and are seen as powerful protectors of the mountains. Bonus entry, Jirugumo. Jirugumo, also known as the horse spider, is a mythical creature from Japanese folklore that is said to take the form of a beautiful woman in order to lure men into a trap. According to legend, Jirugumo is a spider demon who can manipulate her appearance and use her feminine wiles to entice men into her lair. Once she has her victim in her grasp, she will then transform into her true form as a giant spider and devour him. The legend of Jirugumo dates back to ancient times in Japan and she is one of the most infamous and feared creatures in Japanese folklore. In some versions of the legend, Jirugumo is said to live in the mountains, forests or other remote areas where she can easily lure travellers into her lair. In others, she is depicted as living in the cities where she preys on unsuspecting men who are drawn in by her beauty and charm. 
In Japanese folklore, Jorogumo is often depicted as a cunning and malevolent entity who is driven by an insatiable hunger for human flesh. Despite her fearsome reputation, however, she is also sometimes portrayed as having a more complex and nuanced personality, with a tragic backstory that explains her transformation into a monster. In recent years, the legend of Jorogumo has continued to captivate audiences around the world, and she has been depicted in a wide range of media, from traditional Japanese paintings and prints to manga, anime and video games. In conclusion, Jorogumo is a legendary figure who has played a significant role in Japanese folklore and popular culture for centuries. With all that being said, what do you believe? Which of these 10 ghostly accounts disturbed you the most? What other ghosts and folklore have we missed that could have fit in well on this list? Let us know in the comments. For now, thank you for joining us. See you on the next one. Before we jump into this video, we thought it fitting to start off with some interesting yet disturbing facts about the Earth's oceans. Once we've gone through these, we'll move on to the top 10 deep sea mysteries that continue to baffle scientists to this day. The ocean contains the largest living organism on Earth, the Great Barrier Reef, which spans over 1,400 miles and is home to thousands of species of marine life. The Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean, is deeper than Mount Everest, is tall and contains some of the most extreme environments on Earth. The ocean is home to thousands of species of sharks, including the great white shark, which is known for its terrifying attacks on humans. The ocean is also home to the giant squid, a mysterious and often misunderstood creature that can grow up to 43 feet in length and has tentacles that can grab and kill its prey. The ocean is also the site of many unexplained disappearances, including the disappearance of the dust cyclops in 1918 and the vanishing of the entire crew of the Mary Celeste in 1872. The ocean is also home to some of the deadliest and most dangerous creatures on Earth, including the Portuguese man o' war, the blue ringed octopus, and the stonefish. The ocean contains many areas of darkness, known as the abyssal zone, where little light penetrates and strange creatures lurk in the depths. The ocean is also home to many mysterious underwater ruins, including the city of Heraclean, which was lost for over 1,000 years before being rediscovered in 2000. The ocean is also a source of dangerous and potentially deadly natural disasters, such as tsunamis, which are caused by undersea earthquakes and can wipe out entire communities in a matter of minutes. Number 10. The Kaz 2 The ghost ship Kaz 2 is a famous and mysterious sailing vessel that was discovered adrift off the coast of Australia in 2007. The ship was found completely unmanned and without any crew members on board, leading many to believe that it was a ghost ship, a vessel that sails the seas without a crew. The story of the Kaz 2 begins in April 2007, when it was spotted off the coast of northern Queensland, Australia. The Australian Maritime Safety Authority was notified of the unmanned ship and sent out a rescue team to investigate. Upon boarding the vessel, the rescue team discovered that there was no one on board and no signs of foul play or struggle. The ship's navigation equipment was still operating, but the logs and radios were silent. The discovery of the ghost ship Kaz 2 sparked widespread speculation and media coverage, as people tried to explain what could have happened to the crew. Theories ranged from piracy to supernatural forces to simple human error, but no concrete answers were ever found. The only evidence on the ship was a partially eaten meal, leading some to believe that the crew had abandoned ship in a hurry. The fate of the Kaz 2 and its crew remains one of the greatest maritime mysteries of the 21st century. Despite extensive search efforts and investigations, no one knows what happened to the ship or its crew. The ghost ship Kaz 2 serves as a reminder of the dangers and uncertainties of life at sea, and has become a symbol of mystery and intrigue for people around the world. In conclusion, the Kaz 2 is a fascinating and puzzling mystery that continues to captivate people even today. Number 9. The Mariana Trench
The Mariana Trench is located in the Pacific Ocean and is part of the Izuborn and Mariana subduction system, where the Pacific Plate is being forced beneath the Mariana Plate. The incredible pressure and tectonic activity at the Mariana Trench creates unique and extreme underwater environments that are unlike anywhere else on the planet. Despite the depth and inaccessibility of the Mariana Trench, it is home to a variety of marine life, including many species that have adapted to the extreme conditions. Scientists have discovered strange and unusual creatures living at the bottom of the trench, such as the terrifyingly deep dwelling shark, the goblin shark, and the mysterious and elusive amphipod, which resembles a giant shrimp. Exploration of the Mariana Trench has been limited, and much of its secrets remain unknown. The depths are so intense that even the most advanced deep sea submersibles struggle to withstand the pressure. In 2012, filmmaker James Cameron became the first person to reach the bottom of the Mariana Trench solo in a deep sea submersible. The journey was a groundbreaking achievement and gave scientists a glimpse into the unique environment of the trench. Despite the extreme conditions, the Mariana Trench is an important part of the global ocean system and its health is crucial to the overall health of the planet. Scientists are studying the trench to understand how deep sea communities are affected by changes in the ocean environment and how they can help to protect these unique and fragile ecosystems. In conclusion, the Mariana Trench is a mysterious and fascinating part of our ocean and a symbol of the immense diversity and complexity of the underwater world. Number 8. The Baltic Sea Anomaly the Baltic Sea anomaly refers to a strange object that was discovered in June 2011 on the seabed of the Baltic Sea. The object is approximately 60 meters in diameter, circular in shape, and has a large central depression surrounded by several smaller ridges. The object has been the subject of much speculation and numerous theories about its origin, including that it is a remnant of a lost civilization, a UFO crash site, or a natural geological formation. Many scientists believe that the Baltic Sea anomaly is a type of glacial deposit known as a kettle hole. This is a depression in the seafloor that was created when ice was trapped in the ground during the last ice age. As the ice melted, it left a large hole in the ground that eventually filled with water. The ridges surrounding the central depression are thought to be the remains of an ancient beach that was gradually submerged as sea levels rose. Despite the scientific explanations, many people still believe that the Baltic Sea anomaly is of extraterrestrial origin. This belief has been fueled by the fact that sonar readings have shown that the object has a metallic composition and that there are no visible signs of human or natural origins. Further study of the Baltic Sea anomaly has been hindered by the fact that it is located in a busy shipping lane, making it difficult for divers to explore. However, a number of underwater surveys and investigations have been carried out in recent years to learn more about this mysterious object. Some experts have even called for a full-scale excavation of the site to determine its true nature. Overall, the Baltic Sea anomaly continues to be one of the most intriguing and mysterious discoveries of recent years. Number 7. Submarine Disappearances in the year 1968, a mysterious and shocking event took place in the world of submarines. Four separate submarines went missing without a trace, leaving everyone in disbelief and wonder. The Ascorpion, a Soviet submarine K-129, a French submarine Minerve, and the Inns Dakar all vanished into thin air, never to be seen or heard from again. The disappearance of the Minerve was particularly unsettling as it only vanished an hour away from its home port, leaving no clues or signs of what happened to it. The last two submarines, the Inns Dakar and Minerv, disappeared only four days apart, leading many to question if this was just a coincidence or if there was something more sinister at play. The fact that all four submarines went missing in the same year has sparked numerous theories and speculations, from technical failures to secret missions gone wrong. Some suggest that the submarines were involved in some sort of top secret operation, while others believe that they were taken down by enemy forces. However, despite all the investigations and efforts, the truth behind the disappearance of these submarines remains a mystery to this day. The loss of these submarines was a devastating blow to their respective countries and has left a permanent scar in the history of submarines. The families of the missing submariners have been left with nothing but questions and uncertainties, and their disappearance continues to haunt the world to this day. Number 6. The HMS Dedalus Sea Serpent the HMS Daedalus was a British naval vessel that was known for its many adventures and encounters with the unknown. One of the most intriguing of these experiences was the appearance of a mysterious sea serpent that was said to have haunted the ship during its journey through the Atlantic Ocean. The sea serpent was first spotted by the crew of the HMS Daedalus in the early hours of the morning. It was described as a massive, serpent-like creature that was easily three times the size of the ship. The creature had a long, slender body and a large head that was adorned with sharp, jagged teeth. 
Its eyes were said to be a deep, piercing red that glimmered in the moonlight. As the creature began to make its way towards the ship, the crew of the HMS Daedalus was thrown into a state of panic. Some men ran below deck to hide, while others reached for their weapons, preparing to fight off the beast. However, the creature seemed to be unfazed by the weapons and continued its advance towards the ship. The captain of the ship, who was known for his bravery and quick thinking, ordered the crew to man the ship's cannons and fire upon the sea serpent. The cannonballs struck the creature, but instead of causing harm, they merely bounced off its tough, scaly skin. As the creature continued to approach, the crew of the HMS Daedalus began to realize that they were no match for the beast. Just as they thought all was lost, a sudden bolt of lightning struck the sea serpent, causing it to disappear in an instant. The crew was left stunned, unsure of what had just happened. After this encounter, the crew of the HMS Daedalus remained on high alert, always looking out for any signs of the sea serpent. Although it never reappeared, the legend of the creature lived on, becoming one of the most intriguing stories of the ship's journey. To this day, many believe that the sea serpent was a supernatural being, a manifestation of the deep, dark secrets that lurk beneath the ocean's surface. Others believe it was simply a mirage caused by the harsh conditions of the open sea. Number 5. The Bermuda Triangle The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, is a stretch of ocean between Miami, Bermuda and Puerto Rico, named for its triangular shape covering approximately 500,000 square miles. The area is infamous for its strange and mysterious events that have happened over the centuries, making it one of the most famous sea legends. It all started when Christopher Columbus sailed the area and reported a strange phenomenon of a giant ball of light that crashed into the horizon and lit it up. This incident sparked numerous reports of strange events in the area, including the disappearance of several boats without a distress signal, and the most well-known incident in 1945, where an entire US torpedo bomber squadron vanished into the unknown. The Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery to this day, with numerous theories proposed to explain the strange occurrences. Some believe it to be the result of supernatural forces, while others attribute it to natural disasters such as hurricanes and rogue waves. Despite the numerous theories and explanations, the true cause of the strange events in the Bermuda Triangle remains unknown, and the mystery continues to captivate and intrigue people all over the world. This area of the ocean has become a hotbed for speculation and theories, with some claiming that the disappearances are caused by extraterrestrial activity, underwater caves, or even human error. The US government has investigated the events and has come to the conclusion that the Bermuda Triangle is no more dangerous than any other body of water in the world, and that the disappearances are simply a result of natural causes such as storms, poor navigation, and human error. However, despite the lack of concrete evidence, the Bermuda Triangle continues to be shrouded in mystery and intrigue with countless books and documentaries being produced on the subject. For many, the area remains a place of fear and caution, with tales of strange and unexplained events adding to its already ominous reputation. Number 4. ExxonMobil Pipeline Project ExxonMobil's pipeline project took an unexpected turn when they discovered a shipwreck in the vicinity. However, the discovery proved to be less fortunate than anticipated. A team was deployed to investigate the wreckage, but the mission was plagued with technical difficulties and setbacks. The exploration sub experienced multiple malfunctions, including failing video monitors, broken sonar, and hydraulic issues. In an attempt to salvage the mission, the Navy sent in a researcher sub, which only added to the frustration. The sub's rover failed upon entering the water and even when the sub finally reached the wreck, its arms were too short to retrieve any artifacts. These were just some of the many frustrating and unsuccessful attempts to explore the mysterious shipwreck that seemed to be cursed and bring misfortune to all who dared to enter it. Despite the challenges, the team was determined to uncover the secrets of the shipwreck. They tried every possible solution, but each attempt seemed to be met with further obstacles. The ship was clearly not giving up its secrets easily. The team began to wonder if the shipwreck was cursed, and if so, why? What was hidden within its depths that was causing so much trouble? The team decided to bring in experts from various fields, including marine archaeologists, oceanographers, and paranormal investigators. They worked together to find a way to safely explore the wreck. The experts used state-of-the-art technology and approached the investigation with caution, but even with their combined expertise, the ship remained elusive. Days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. The team's persistence finally paid off when they were able to retrieve a piece of the ship's history. It was a journal written by the ship's captain, detailing the events that led to its sinking. The journal revealed that the ship was carrying a valuable treasure and the crew had been cursed by a vengeful pirate. The treasure was cursed and whoever attempted to retrieve it would be doomed to failure. The team realized that the shipwreck was not cursed, but the treasure was. They made the decision to leave the treasure where it lay and to preserve the ship's history for future generations. 
Number three, Stronse Beast. Fun fact about how deep Scottish locks can go. The deepest lock was found to be Loch Morar at one, 17 feet deep. This could fit the Eiffel Tower within it with 33 feet to spare. Loch Ness was in second place, Loch Lomond third at 623 feet. Scotland is widely known for its fascinating tales of sea beasts residing in the famous Loch Ness. However, the presence of these creatures goes beyond just the legendary Loch Ness monster. In 1808, an unusual and mysterious creature washed up on the shores of Stronse, and many people believe it was another plesiosaurus. Despite this, scientists have speculated that it could have been a decaying 36 feet long basking shark. But this theory raises a question as basking sharks are not known to have paw-like fins with articulating joints, which was reported by the eyewitnesses who saw the creature. This has added to the mystery and speculation surrounding the creatures that may reside in Scotland's locks. However, despite the scientific explanation, many locals and visitors to the area still hold on to the belief that these creatures are something more than just ordinary sea animals. They point to the numerous eyewitness accounts and photographs that claim to show the presence of the Loch Ness Monster and other similar creatures. Additionally, there have been various sonar readings and underwater recordings that seem to suggest the existence of something large and unknown in the lochs. Regardless of the scientific explanation, the tales of sea beasts in Scotland's lochs have captured the imagination of people all over the world. The search for the Loch Ness Monster and other similar creatures has become a popular attraction for tourists, and numerous organizations and individuals continue to investigate and search for evidence of these creatures. In conclusion, Scotland's lochs continue to be a source of fascination and mystery. While science may have explanations for the strange sightings, the possibility of these sea beasts still captivates the minds of many. Number 2. The Phantom Island of Bermuda The Phantom Island of Bermuda is a mysterious piece of land that has been lost in the depths of the Gulf of Mexico for centuries. It is believed to have existed in the late 1500s and early 1600s, but its exact location and existence have been the subject of much debate. Many theories and legends have been passed down from generation to generation, with many claiming that the island was cursed, haunted or simply vanished into thin air. The island was first mentioned by Spanish explorer Hernán Cortes in his notes and maps as a lush and fertile piece of land that was abundant with resources. He claimed that Bermuda was a valuable source of wood and other resources that were essential for the Spanish Empire's expansion in the New World. He also claimed that the island was inhabited by friendly natives who welcomed the Spanish with open arms. However, in later years, the island seemed to have disappeared from all maps and records, leaving many to wonder if it ever existed in the first place. Some believe that the island was submerged due to rising sea levels, while others claim that it was deliberately erased from the maps to hide its true value from other colonial powers. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the phantom island of Bermuda continues to captivate the imagination of people from all over the world. Many have embarked on expeditions to find the lost island, but their efforts have been in vain. The Gulf of Mexico remains shrouded in mystery, and the true fate of Bermuda remains unknown. Whether it was a phantom island that was simply a figment of court's imagination, or a piece of land that was cursed and doomed to disappear, the phantom island of Bermuda remains a mystery that has yet to be solved. Number 1. The Onaguni Monument The Yonaguni Monument is a mysterious underwater rock formation located off the coast of the island of Yonaguni in Japan. It is considered one of the world's greatest underwater archaeological discoveries and is believed by some to be evidence of an ancient civilization that predates recorded history. The site was discovered in 1986 by a local diver and is now a popular tourist destination for scuba divers. The Yonaguni Monument is made up of several massive rock structures that rise from the seabed to a height of over 100 feet. The most striking feature is a large flat platform that resembles a staircase, surrounded by several columns and blocks that seem to have been deliberately placed there. The structures are made of a type of sandstone that is different from the surrounding rock formations, leading some to believe that they are man-made. The precise origin of the Yonaguni Monument is a matter of much debate among archaeologists, geologists and other experts. Some believe that the structures were created by natural processes such as tectonic activity or erosion, while others believe that they are the remains of a lost civilization. Proponents of the ancient civilization theory argue that the structures are too complex and precise to have been formed naturally, and that they bear a strong resemblance to other ancient ruins around the world. The debate over the origin of the Yonaguni monument continues, with no clear answer in sight. However, regardless of its origins, the site remains a fascinating and awe-inspiring underwater landmark, drawing visitors from all over the world to explore its mysterious underwater structures. In conclusion, the Yonaguni Monument is a truly unique and enigmatic site that has captured the imagination of people around the world.
With all that being said, what do you believe? What other mysteries relating to the deep dark and Kai deaths should we have added to this list? Which ocean mysteries disturb you the most? Let us know in the comments. We generally enjoy exploring these unsolved mysteries, folklore and other urban legends from around the world here on Scary Top 10 TV and if you've watched until the end of this video we hope you do too. For now, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to drop us a like and subscribe so you don't miss out of similar content from us in future. Many thanks and see you on the next one. The Top 10 Most Terrifying Bermuda Triangle Myths With a population of just over 64,000 and being located as close as you can get to the infamous Bermuda Triangle, naturally the town of Bermuda has its fair share of strange myths and what many would consider to be terrifying urban legends. Many can't help but wonder if any of these myths have a link to the many mysterious accounts of disappearances in this part of the world circulating around the planet. In this video, we will be covering the top 10 most terrifying Bermuda Triangle myths. Be sure to watch until the end to get the most out of this list and to let us know if there are any urban legends from this area that we might have missed. If you are a returning viewer, welcome. Back. Number 10. The Crystal Caves Demon the Crystal Caves Demon, as it has become known, is a mysterious entity that has been seen by numerous visitors to the popular tourist attraction. The caves, located in Bermuda, are a labyrinth of underground tunnels and chambers filled with stunning crystal formations that have drawn visitors for decades. However, for some visitors, the beauty of the caves has been overshadowed by the chilling presence of a sinister entity. Eyewitness accounts vary, but many describe a dark, shadowy figure that moves silently through the caves, often appearing and disappearing without a trace. Some say the demon is tall and imposing, with glowing red eyes and a sinister grin, while others describe it as a ghostly apparition, barely visible in the dimly lit caverns. Despite the differences in descriptions, one thing is clear, the figure is frightening and sends shivers down the spines of those who have seen it. Many theories abound about the origin of the demon, but no one can say for sure what it is or why it haunts the caves. Some believe it is the ghost of a former explorer who died within the caves, while others speculate that it is the manifestation of an evil entity that has been trapped within the caves for centuries. Some even say that the demon is the result of a curse placed on the caves by ancient Bermuda natives, warning visitors of the dangers that lay within. Regardless of its origin, the Crystal Caves demon has become a popular topic of discussion among visitors to the caves, and many come to the attraction specifically to see if they can spot the elusive figure. Despite the fear that it instills in many, the demon has become a fixture of the caves, a mysterious presence that adds to the allure and intrigue of one of Bermuda's most popular tourist attractions. Whether it is a demon, a ghost, or something else entirely, the Crystal Caves demon continues to haunt the minds of those who have encountered it. Number 9. The Headless Horseman of St. George The Headless Horseman of St. George in Bermuda is a well-known legend that has been passed down from generation to generation in the local community. The story is about a horseman who roams the streets of St. George's at night, riding his horse in search of his lost head. According to the legend, the Headless Horseman was once a wealthy plantation owner who lived in the town of St. George's. He was known for his harsh treatment of his slaves and was hated by the local community. One night, as he was riding home from a late night drinking binge, he was ambushed by a group of slaves who hacked off his head in retaliation for his cruelty. Since then, the Headless Horseman has been seen riding his horse through the streets of St. George's, searching for his missing head. The sight of the Headless Horseman is said to be a warning of impending doom and is believed to be a bad omen for the town. Many residents of St. George's still believe in the legend of the Headless Horseman and it is not uncommon to hear stories of sightings or encounters with the ghostly figure. Despite the fact that the Headless Horseman is considered a frightening and ominous figure, many tourists and locals flock to St. George's each year to catch a glimpse of the legendary ghost. Some even claim to have had encounters with the Headless Horseman, leading many to believe that the legend is based on truth and not just folklore. The Headless Horseman of St. George in Bermuda remains a popular and intriguing part of the town's history and culture. Number 8. The Watcher in the Woods The Watcher in the Woods is a phenomenon that has been reported for many years in Bermuda, causing fear and paranoia among the local population. According to the stories, the figure is said to be a dark, ominous presence that seems to be constantly observing anyone who enters the woods. People have reported seeing the figure from a distance, watching them as they explore the dense forest. Some say they feel a chill run down their spine as they see the figure, as if it is silently warning them to leave. Others say that the figure is a ghost of someone who died in the woods, and that it is seeking revenge for their untimely death. Others believe that the Watcher in the Woods is a demon, a manifestation of evil energy that dwells in the forest. 
They claim that the figure is a harbinger of doom and that anyone who encounters it is in grave danger. Some even say that the figure can possess those who are too afraid to leave and that it feeds off their fear and terror. Despite the different interpretations of the Watcher in the woods, one thing is certain, it is a frightening and mysterious entity that has captured the imagination of people for generations. Number 7. The Haunted Lighthouse the lighthouse in question is a historic structure that has been standing on the shores of Bermuda for centuries. It was built to help guide ships safely into the harbour and to keep sailors from getting lost at sea. But over the years, the lighthouse has become the subject of many ghostly legends and tales of the paranormal. According to local law, the ghost of the sailor who died in this dome is said to haunt the lighthouse to this day. Some say that the sailor was on a ship that was caught in a terrible storm and was swept overboard, never to be seen again. Others believe that the sailor was actually a keeper of the lighthouse who lost his life while trying to keep the light shining during a particularly violent storm. Regardless of the true story, the lighthouse has become a popular spot for ghost hunters and paranormal enthusiasts. People from all over the world come to visit the lighthouse, hoping to catch a glimpse of the ghostly apparition or to hear the strange noises that are said to come from within the structure. Many have reported hearing strange creaks and groans, footsteps echoing through the empty halls, and ghostly whispers in the wind. Some have even claimed to have seen the ghostly figure of the sailor, standing on the top of the lighthouse and looking out to sea. Despite these stories, many people still believe that the lighthouse is simply the victim of overactive imaginations and that the strange noises and ghostly sightings are simply the result of wind and the age of the structure. But for those who have experienced the strange occurrences at the lighthouse, the truth is far more sinister and haunting. Whether or not the lighthouse is truly haunted, it remains one of the most intriguing and mysterious structures in Bermuda. Number 6. The Man in Black The Man in Black, also known as the Phantom of Bermuda, has been a part of local folklore for centuries. Despite the various interpretations of his origins, one thing is clear, he strikes fear into the hearts of those who cross his path. According to legend, the Man in Black is a figure dressed in black from head to toe, with a tall stature and piercing eyes that can be seen from a distance. Some say that he is a ghostly apparition, haunting the roads and highways of Bermuda as a result of a tragic event that took place in the past. Others believe that he is a demon, sent to terrorise the people of Bermuda as a punishment for their sins. Regardless of his origin, the Man in Black is known to be a dangerous entity. Those who have encountered him claim that they felt a sense of dread and unease, as if they were being watched by a sinister force. Some have reported being chased by the Man in Black, while others claim that they were paralysed with fear and could not move or speak. Despite the fear that he inspires, the Man in Black remains a popular subject in Bermuda, with locals sharing stories of their own encounters and speculating about his true identity. Some say that he is a warning of the dangers that lurk on the roads at night, while others believe that he is a symbol of the darker aspects of human nature. Number 5. The Haunted Hotel Located in the heart of Bermuda, there is one particular haunted hotel that has been a source of eerie legends and tales for generations. With its ornate Victorian architecture, dark, creepy halls and hidden passageways, the hotel has an ominous presence that has drawn the attention of paranormal enthusiasts and ghost hunters from all over the world. The strange occurrences at the hotel date back to its opening, over a hundred years ago. Guests have reported hearing eerie noises, such as footsteps and whispers, coming from empty rooms. Others have claimed to see ghostly apparitions, such as the apparition of a woman in a white dress or the ghost of a man who appears to be checking in, only to disappear into thin air. Many believe that the hotel is haunted by the spirits of former guests who died there, either due to natural causes or mysterious disappearances. Some say that these spirits are still searching for answers or seeking revenge for their untimely death. The hotel staff has reported numerous instances of objects moving or disappearing on their own, adding to the spooky atmosphere of the place. Despite these claims, the hotel has continued to be a popular destination for visitors looking for a unique experience. Some guests book rooms specifically to try and catch a glimpse of a ghostly apparition, while others come to explore the haunted halls and rooms. The hotel has even started offering ghost tours, which are led by experienced paranormal investigators, to visitors looking for a thrilling adventure. Whether you believe in ghosts or not, there's no denying that the haunted hotel has a dark and eerie atmosphere that has captured the imagination of many. Number 4. The Witch of Pembroke The Witch of Pembroke has become a local legend in Bermuda, with stories of her haunting the area for generations. It is said that she lived in the Pembroke area in the late 1600s and was known for her dark powers and wicked ways. The villagers feared her and whispered about the evil spells she cast, causing harm to those who crossed her path. 
People in the area claim to have seen a ghostly figure lurking in the shadows with a cackle that sends chills down the spine. Some say they have felt her cold breath on their neck or heard her whispers in their ear. Many claim to have experienced strange and frightening events while in her presence, such as objects moving on their own, strange noises and eerie feelings of being watched. Despite her reputation for evil, some say that the Witch of Pembroke was not always a wicked sorceress. According to legend, she was once a respected healer and midwife, who used her knowledge of herbs and natural remedies to help the sick and injured. However, after a tragedy struck her family, she became consumed by anger and despair, turning to dark magic to seek revenge. Today, the Pembroke area is still said to be haunted by the Witch of Pembroke, with many residents avoiding the area at night for fear of encountering her ghost. Despite the scary stories, some brave souls venture into the area, searching for the truth behind the legend. Some even claim to have seen a ghost, with her hair wild and eyes glowing in the dark. Number 3. The White Lady of Gibbet Island the White Lady of Gibbet Island is a well-known legend that has been passed down through generations of islanders. Her story is said to have originated from the 18th century, when the island was used as a prison for the most dangerous and notorious criminals. The White Lady was one of the prisoners who was locked up in solitary confinement and died there, never to see the light of day again. According to local law, the White Lady's ghostly apparition still haunts the abandoned prison on Jibby Island, her restless spirit unable to find peace. Her ghostly presence is said to be seen wandering the empty cells and corridors of the prison, still searching for a way out of the solitary confinement that took her life. Many islanders claim to have seen the White Lady's ghost, her ethereal figure dressed in a white gown, her hair long and flowing behind her. Some have reported hearing her ghostly moans and whispers, while others claim to have felt her cold touch or felt her presence. Over the years, many brave souls have ventured to the abandoned prison on Jibbet Island, seeking to confront the White Lady and discover the truth behind her haunting presence. However, those who have dared to enter the prison have reported feeling a strange sense of unease and foreboding, as if the ghostly apparition is warning them not to enter. The legend of the White Lady of Jibbet Island continues to fascinate locals and visitors alike, and her ghostly presence is a constant reminder of the dark and grim history of the island. Number 2. The Ghost of Tom Moore Tom Moore was born in Dublin in 1779 and became one of Ireland's most famous poets and composers. He wrote a number of popular songs and ballads, including The Last Rose of Summer, which is still widely known and loved today. Moore lived in Hamilton for a number of years, and his former home there is now a museum dedicated to his life and work. However, many visitors to the museum have reported strange and unexplained occurrences, leading some to believe that the ghost of Tom Moore still haunts the property. Visitors have reported feeling cold spots, hearing unexplained noises, and seeing strange lights and apparitions. Some have even reported feeling as if they are being watched by an unseen presence. The ghost of Tom Moore is said to be a benign spirit, and many people who have experienced strange phenomena in the museum have reported feeling a sense of peace and comfort. Some believe that Tom Moore's ghost is simply looking after the place that was once his home and that he is still deeply connected to the property and the memories that it holds. Whether the ghost of Tom Moore is truly haunting the museum or not remains a mystery, but for many visitors, the idea of being in the presence of such a legendary figure is a thrilling and unforgettable experience. Number 1. The Grey Lady of Hob Bay The Grey Lady of Hob Bay is a well-known legend among the locals of the small town surrounding the swampy area. She is said to be a ghostly woman who roams the murky waters of the bay, searching for her lost child. Her appearance is described as a figure draped in grey robes, with long flowing hair and a sad expression on her face. According to the legend, the Grey Lady lived in the town many years ago and was a loving mother to her young son. One day, while playing in the swamp, the boy went missing and was never found. The Grey Lady was devastated by the loss of her child and was consumed by grief. It is said that she wandered the swamp day and night, searching for her lost son. The locals of the town tell of sightings of the Grey Lady, wandering aimlessly through the swamp and calling out for her son. Her voice is said to be filled with sorrow and desperation, causing a chill to run down the spine of anyone who hears it. Some say that if you listen closely, you can hear the sound of her son's laughter echoing through the swamp, leading her on her search. Despite the many attempts of the townspeople to find the lost boy, he was never found, and the Grey Lady's search continues to this day. Her ghostly presence in the swamp is said to be a reminder of the tragedy that occurred in the area, and a warning to those who venture too far into the murky waters. The Grey Lady of Hob Bay has become a popular ghost story among the townspeople and is often told to young children as a cautionary tale. With all that being said, what do you believe? What other myths, legends and folklore should have been included in this list? Which one scared you the most? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed the video.
Thank you for watching. See you on the next one.